Hey, you guys, it's Ruthie and Felicia, and we are here live on the red Jack carpet Horner, Horner. for the 2018 Tony Awards, the 72nd Happy annual. I here, can't. come. You okay, I just want to step on your beautiful we dress. Are live, doll. I know, and we look stunning. Who are you Thank wearing? You. Who styled you? Tell me about everything, girl. Okay, so talk about. I've talked about all year having really famously talented friends who are on Broadway, which yes. feels incredible. But another talented friend from high school, my friend Greg Dassenville for Dassen Vogue styled Love me. It. Love it. In a lovely Nicole Bakhti number. Y'all have to wait to see the photos. I got though. jewels from Versani. I feel very glam. Shoes and a clutch from Nina. It's yes. Living the life, living Hello. the life. And Justin Bowen, who's in Hello Dolly, he's doing his matinee right now, did my fabulous hair. And he looks great, girl. Thank you. Stunning. Okay, but, and you look lovely. This is a Macy's dress. I don't know who designed it, but some fantastic designer that's at Macy's got the dress. Want to give them a shout out. But Betsy and Lisa, those are the real rock stars. They did my hair. And my makeup. Because it's all about getting glam, and we cannot wait for you to see how glamorous the stars are tonight on the red carpet. Yes. Thank you all so much for tuning in. For those of you who have been watching our red carpet live streams all year from the opening nights of Broadway, thank you for taking the journey with us. It has been a journey. It's been a journey. Another season complete. And we're counting down to the 8 p.m. broadcast on CBS. We are live. (laughs) We've got publicists on the carpet. They're all scoping out where all the outlets are because we are going to get you all of your Broadway favorites. And I know that they love to come say hi to the live stream. (laughs) It's famous. The Playbill live stream is famous. Please comment below. We want to know who you're rooting for. You can comment with your questions below for people who you have questions for who you want to hear from there are going to be presenters walking the carpet um bernadette peters is presenting leslie odom jr is presenting patty lapone is presenting it's a good squad this year it's a great carrie washington carrie washington is coming back to broadway having been away for scandal she was last year in 2009 and now she's coming back with one of my favorites, Stephen Pasquale. <laughs> we love dearly. We love yes. Steve. <laughs> if you're out there, we love you. Um, he was in Junk earlier this year, which True. is nominated for Best Play. Ayad Akhtar wrote it. He's a Pulitzer Prize winner, but not yet a Tony winner. Could tonight be the night? Oh, it's, it's the energy's so great, though. I love it. He's up against... <laughs> yeah, let's talk some categories. Let's. So, Junk is up against Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Yes by Jack Thorne, with an original story by the J.K. Rowling, and John Tiffany, who directed it. So the story is from the three of them, and the script is from Jack Thorne. Mm -hmm. We also have Latin History for Morons, John Leguizamo, Mm -hmm. and The Children, by Kirsten Child. So that's a great category. Talk to me about Best Musicals, girl. I have to take a moment. We've got Mean Girls, we've got Frozen, we've got SpongeBob, we've got The Band's Visit, and... I know people who are rooting for every single one of them. I do. I know people who are rooting for everyone. It's been such a, I say this without connotation, it is a season of franchises. You have big names that people are excited about. You know, Spongebob comes from the cartoon in the Nickelodeon world. Mean Girls has this hit movie with its following. Frozen, of course, Disney. And the band's visit, while... Not a franchise did originate in an Israeli indie film true. from 2007 true. and comes from off Broadway with a big following, so that's exciting. All four of those are nominated for Best Book as well, and Who all four of them made making their, their Broadway <laughs> debuts. Yes. Uh, very exciting. I'm excited for Tina Fey. I'm excited for Edamar Moses. Now, this is me just like seeing if I can name all of them Jennifer Lee and Kyle Jarrow. Like all of them. But speaking of things we're excited for, we also want to tell you about a brand new musical yes. that's coming to Broadway this fall. It is called The Prom. It is an original idea, so not based in a movie, cartoon, nothing. Original source material directed by Casey Nicola, who is nominated tonight. Here's the message from The Prom. (laughs) Oh, hi. Hi. It's me, Josh Lehman, from Broadway's new musical, The Prom, coming this fall. Buy your tickets now because it's going to be really good. And I'm here with my prom co-star, Tony winner, Beth Level. Hello. Hello. How I'm are you tonight? Be much better being here. Oh with God, you. I love you. I love you back. Anyway, we're so excited because tonight is Tony night. Oh! We would be on the red carpet ourselves, but we are rehearsing for 54 Below Sings Rebecca later tonight. So we're here in between rehearsals. And so, um, 
I just want to know a few things. Beth, will yes. you tell us what The Prom is about? I would be happy to. The Thank Prom you. is an original new musical that is relevant, hilarious, and full of the biggest heart you'll see on Broadway. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we can't wait to share it with can't you. Can't wait. Now we're going to go ahead and go down to the red carpet where I hear Tina Fey is talking about her upcoming musical version of Night Mother. Beth Level and Josh Lehman make me so excited. I mean, what could be more exciting than Tony winner Beth Level coming back to Broadway to belt out some freaking show tunes? We're going to bring Felicia back in here before we get our interviews started. Because I really want to know, I was watching back last year's live stream where we both said what our favorite shows of the year were, and you were a big Jitney fan for the whole season. Oh, I, I know, Jitney remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was a big bandstand fan, so what, what topped it for you? You know, I think in terms of Broadway this season, I loved Spongebob. I loved what Tina Landau did with the direction. Um, and she won the Drama Desk leading up to tonight. We'll have to see how things compare with a week ago. Spongebob won for Best Direction of a Musical for Tina and Best and Outstanding Musical. That's what those categories are, outstanding. Yes, um, so I love that. I love David Zinn's designs, costume and scenic. Um, so I think I think that's gonna be the one I, I say is like my my quote favorite of the season. Like it just brought me so much joy seeing I saw three times and of course learned the choreo. Well, apparently you got it because Tina Landau. I happened to do a director's roundtable. If you haven't watched it yet, it's on Playbill.com. Go to Playbill.com/slash/directorsroundtable. We gathered the five Tony-nominated directors. Um, nominated for direction of a musical this year. So that's Tina Landau for Spongebob, Bartlett Shear for My Fair Lady, Michael Arden for Once on This Island, Casey Nicola for Mean Girls, and David Cromer for The Band's Visit. It was a fascinating conversation. So cool to get them all in the same room. And I asked them all what they want audiences to take yes, away and yes. Tina, Tina Landau said joy. Right. And I love the part where you said what did they feel like they made it and she was like when the actors run down to the back of the orchestra to high five the kids that are in the back. And yeah, that's her proudest moment is when she sees little kids really digging in and enjoying Broadway that way. I love way. that. It's so inclusive. But how, how, oh my god. So I we're going to have designers. Yes. We are going to have creatives. We are going to have stars. We are going to have presenters. It's all here tonight. I want to talk about for a minute before we get anyone on here to shout out to the voters. 849 voters this year. 43 nominators for 26 categories because, get this, sound design of a musical and a play are back. Yes, yes, shout out. Had a hiatus after 2014, but the category is back. And the people like demanded it. They're like, we want sound design. It's true. All right, who do we have here? We have Clint Ramos from Once on This Island, you guys. He is the costume designer. Brilliant. Hello. Hi, darling. How are you? You I'm fabulous. Beautiful. How are you? Thank you so much. Say hi to Facebook Live. Hi, Facebook Live. I am, okay, so this is a master of storytelling for anyone who doesn't think, who, for anyone who thinks that costumes are wardrobe only and just clothes, they are so mistaken, there's so much storytelling, and look at the storytelling in your shirt, you are dressed for once on this island. Yes, I am, I'm wearing Timon, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a tree, yeah. The beautiful Thanks to Alexander tree. McQueen. <laughs> Thank you, Alexander McQueen. Thank you. Yeah. Talk to me about your design for this number. There's a gorgeous gallery if you go to playbill.com slash Clint Ramos where you can see all of your designs for this show. This is true. But I loved what you told me about the hibiscus flower being a theme. Right. So Timon, basically, her one costume or her costumes are based on the, uh, uh, the national flower of Haiti, the hibiscus. And it transforms from a simple peasant dress to a goddess dress. And it just gets the lengthening as the story deepens. It's stunning. But I didn't know when we spoke that you also provided the costumes that are hanging on the clotheslines. For those of you who don't know, at Circle in the Square, where Once on this Island is, it's an immersive show. So you walk in and that whole space is transformed. And we have clothing yeah. on the lines that you are responsible for, not yeah. Dane Laffrey, or no, in conjunction. La Dane Laffrey provided it, and we curated it together. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Talk to me about creating the gods from found objects and what a challenge that was and tackling that. Well, I think it came from Michael Arden's vision, you know, Michael Arden really, our, our director Michael Arden really. Who's nominated for a Tony as well. That's right, whoop whoop. 
um, really wanted to make this revival mean something and resonate in our present world. And I think uh, we looked at what these hurricane ravaged worlds look like and it only made sense that we created everything out of that. So yeah, it's basically creating the, the divine out of the discarded. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to us. Thank you so much. You look beautiful. We're wishing you all the luck in the world tonight. Clint Ramos, you guys. All right. Like I said, designers are here. Are you guys seeing Andy Mientis in the back? He is wearing... I mean, he's here supporting his husband, Michael Arden, who, as I said, is Tony nominated tonight for his direction of Once on This Island, which is nominated for eight Tony Awards, including Best Revival. Haley Kilgore is nominated for her Broadway debut as Timoon, which inspired Clint's Get Up Tonight. But before we get going, we have one more note from the prom. from Playbill's live stream of the Red Carpet of the Tony Award. I got us some refreshments, one for you and one for me. Cheers, honey. Now, so let's ask some questions. How long have you been involved with the prom? Um, for about four years, I did the first table read that, mm -hmm. that was ever done, and I have been associated with it, luckily, ever since then, mm. with Casey and, and Bob Martin and Matt and Chad, and it's a great... And me. And you. And me. Yes, I'm very lucky. Love me. it. Me. Now, yes. um, tell us about Dee Dee. I cannot wait for them. Dee Dee is her character in the show, and it's one of my favorite characters Thank ever Thank you. Written. I love I love Dee Dee Allen. I, yeah. she, she represents my evil twin. She's a narcissistic, not necessarily kind diva who's had a wonderful career on Broadway, two Tonys, but now her career is slipping, so she's seeking, she's desperately seeking uh, a renewal in her life. And just to in inhabit her, is really exciting. <laughs> it's the first time ever in my career where like at a 29 hour reading at a workshop, like in a rehearsal room with money people, I have seen her get a standing ovation three separate times. Oh, stop it. No, it's that kind of good. <laughs> anyway, really? let's go Thank back down to the red oh. carpet. We're so happy that you're joining us. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Happy Tony night. Happy Tony Happy night. Happy Tony night. Mm. 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 Oh. All right, I cannot get enough of Josh Lehman. He is just too funny. I'm gearing up for when this show opens. It begins previews in October. It opens officially November 15th at the Court Theater on Broadway. Tickets are on sale, so go to prommusical.com for that. And we want to thank them so much for sponsoring this live stream. We're here on the Tony Awards red carpet for those of you who are just tuning in. We've already spoken to designer Clint Ramos of Once on This Island. Director Michael Arden is to my right. We will have him on the live stream next. I'm loving seeing all of the love for Bands Visit and Frozen and Mean Girls. You guys are excited fans and we're excited to have you tuning in. A little more Tony history for you. The Tonys began in 1947 for those of you who can do the math to 72, but the first award for best musical didn't come until 1949 and that was with Kiss Me Kate and then that was also the first year that we had a trophy given instead of just an envelope and a certificate and then in 1968 we got a new medallion all right Michael Arden hi hey, how are you you look beautiful thank you you look wonderful thank too you. say hi to the live stream hey guys hey, all Pringle. right so I was telling them about the phenomenal round table that we had that I could have oh. just gone on for two more hours at least with you guys. I've gone back and read it several times just so I can like, you know, take notes from these amazing directors I got the chance to sit with. So thank you for having us. Absolutely. One of the things we didn't get to talk about was we talked a lot about creating rules for the world, but we didn't go so specific to once on this island. What were your rules for the world? My rules were, I mean, you know, there were rules that were imposed just because of the space. Um, but my rules were that everything had to be real. That, that you know, no fake candles, uh, no uh, real rain, real water, real sand, real, uh, you know, you, everything. Yeah, there's something in my eye, but uh, it's tears, probably. Tony tears. Uh, so that was, that was a huge rule, you know, and, and that, that I didn't, I wanted everything to be born out of, of what the people had to rebuild with. So that sort of limited what we could use, but I think that that, like, 
that forced us to right. really use our, our our knockins. Paint yourself into a corner. You have to get creative how to get out. <laughs> it's so true. But, you know, obstacles force us to, to be uh, ingenuitive. And uh, I'm so happy the obstacles occur that did. Me too. Also wondering, you come from a performing background as well. How does that help you when you put on your director's hat? Well, I just I think I, I understand actors in a way because I am one. So I, I respect them a great deal. I mean, they, they ultimately have to do it. And so uh, I, I like to give them as much, as many tools as possible, but just get out of their way and let them do their best work. You know, it's not about me telling anybody what to do. It's about me empowering them to stumble and fall and find their way to their greatness. Well, you have found greatness here. You did a phenomenal job reviving Spring Awakening, reinventing that. This is another reinvention. Outside of Broadway, you've reinvented Merrily, and you've got Annie coming up. What's what else is on your list of reinvention? Oh, What's it. noodling around in your head? So many things. My mind is a crazy, crazy place. Uh, but I'm really excited. I'm gonna after Annie. Uh, I, I get to do a uh, one-man Christmas carol with Jefferson Mays. So we're really going to be so doing something really, really exciting and a little scary. All right. Hopefully a lot scary. Well, for those of you out in California, all right, congratulations. Thank you so much. Great to see you. So much luck tonight. Bye. All right, say farewell to Michael Arden. We're so glad that he stopped by. So for those of you who don't know, oh, who's here? Okay, he's going to take a photo first. Ayad Akhtar, as we were talking earlier, nominated for Best Play for Junk. There's so much chaos going on, and it's not even the busiest time. All right. Bring him on in. Hello. How are you? You look so beautiful. Thank you so much. You look very dapper yourself. Say hello to the Facebook Live viewers. Hi. Um, Hi, Live viewers. Yeah, come on in. Come on into the... No, you look lovely. I thought, you know, got the, the like, rugged... Well, the black and white, black and white thing. There so, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another play on Broadway, mm -hmm. another message out there, even though your show closed in January, limited run, tell me... Have you heard things reverberating back from it? What was audience sure. response like? I mean, the audience response was strong. I, I was invited to Goldman Sachs to address the bank about the, cap, the contradictions of capital. And, you know, Bill Moyers wrote a very long, it was, I was his last interview actually, wrote a very long piece about it. Uh, Jim Stewart wrote about it in the Times. People keep talking about it. Uh, it's up in Germany now, two, the two biggest theaters in Germany. We'll be doing it uh, in a bunch of places across the country next year. Possibility to do it in London, possibly. So, you know. Play for change, you guys. Try, we're try, well, we're trying. I mean, I don't know that you want. If you want to change the world, maybe writing a play is not the best way to do it. I disagree. <laughs> I think it all starts with our art, and, and that starts with our playwrights. Tell me about the language that you're using. When you balance what you need to accomplish to keep the world real, but not hit people over the head, not be too laborious with it. I mean, it's keeping an audience engaged and alive to the story is the primary thing. And then trying to find the language, the financial language, and to twist it just enough so that it begins to be a poetic language, not just a financial language. That was the challenge, is to access and poetry. And Steve Pasquale, we were talking about, is coming back to Broadway. Tell me about collaborating with him, because he was your leading man, how that informed the character that you wrote, even though that character was based on someone real. Well, Steven's such an amazing actor, and he has the ability to sort of make the audience like him effortlessly. So, you know... So darn charming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, he, he just who he is does so much of the work in terms of audience sympathy, and He's also an actor with a lot of range, so it's it's really it was wonderful to work with him. Terrific. Well, we wish you the best of luck tonight. Thank you as always for stopping by. Thank you, Ruthie. Congratulations, <laughs> Ed Oktar, nominated for best play. He was the Pulitzer Prize winner for a play called Disgrace back in 2013, which then bowed on Broadway, starring Josh Radner, um, Karen Pittman. It was phenomenal. I urge you that if you can't see one of his plays, to read one of his plays, because it's also stunning language on the page. I'm so excited that we have so many people tuning in. I want to give shout-outs to some of you guys. Megan Modero and Keith Owens and Ellie Louise Fulcher and Susie Q. I love that. And Jan Morales. 
Um, Lucinda Curry, our love for theater is real. Roger Rifkin is cheering for Ethan Slater. He's nominated tonight for his Broadway debut as SpongeBob SquarePants in SpongeBob SquarePants the Musical. He won the Drama Desk for Lead Actor in a Musical. We'll see if it's a uh, follow suit this evening. He's been with the character for six years, which is pretty incredible to have developed it from the very first stages. We have designers coming our way. I love this. I love this. Hi. Ruthie Fairberg from Playbill. Hi, Ruthie. Nice to see you. I'm going to have you scooch in this way just so we're not too in there. I'll be very cozy with this very cozy. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm Tell so me about your work on this show. Uh, I was thrilled to join forces again, and Hi, I'm Good evening. I'm Neil from The Globe. Nice to meet you. I'm Ruthie. I mean, I'm so fortunate. still your Scooch on in. Yes. I know. Your face is more important than mine, so make sure you're in the line of sight. I was just saying I was thrilled to join forces again with Sonia Friedman and Neil Constable, CEO of The Globe, Shakespeare's Globe, to bring what we felt would be a extraordinary theater to Broadway yeah. and to bring the work of first Claire, Van Campen. Claire Van Campen and I joyfully have a um, mission statement as a producer to bring the work of women to stage playwrights and directors and it was a thrill well All the way. we are behind you 100 percent of the way. the way what was it like to be able to create recreate the Wanamaker Playhouse inside the Belasco well from design to uh, cargo to customs to install, to if you can imagine. the authorities to yes. put up 80 candles on stage, which Absolutely. is not your usual yes. Broadway. They lit it completely by candlelight. Yes. Authentically, the like the house lights were raised slightly. Yes. It was beautiful. Yes. I think Paul Russell's probably the first Tony nominee for best lighting to actually have designed candle by candlelight. Light. Well, since we've had electronic lights, for sure. <laughs> which is extraordinary. And one of the aspects of the production itself was the sensory experience. So as you came in the theater, you could actually smell the beeswax candles. So we took you back in time. Absolutely. So, very well, nice. congratulations oh, on the beautiful you. production. Thank Such you, a pleasure to you. meet you both. And we love you, Playboy. We'll it. always yeah, we love you on in London. Those. That's we how do. we found out all our industry news. That's, so, true. That's, true. That's what we love to hear. Follow Playbill.com. All right. There's some fabulous outfits on this carpet tonight. And so if you are watching, Thank you so much, first of all. But tomorrow we are going to have our best dressed gallery, judged by none other than professional stylist George Brescia. You may have seen him on the Today Show, as well as his own show. He is going to be narrowing down all the fabulous looks to the top ones of the evening. So stay tuned to Playbill.com for that tomorrow. Again, we're so happy to have you joining us here tonight. It's an incredible night for theater. 26 categories, 43 nominators, 849 voters have made this evening happen. We're here live at Radio City Music Hall. I also want to urge you to follow Playbill on all the social channels, at Playbill on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Felicia is here taking some more behind the scenes photos for Instagram. We've got our Twitter countdown going on thanks to our Theater Vault historian and staff writer Logan Kowal Block giving us all the historic goods, all the look back moments, and counting down until 8 p.m. when Sarah Bareilles and Josh Groban host. I don't know about you, I'm thrilled because they are really of the community. They were both nominated so recently. Sarah is actually nominated for her second time tonight as one of the composers of SpongeBob. She wrote the Pirates song at the top of Act Two. She was, of course, nominated for her score for Waitress in 2016, and Josh was nominated just last year for his role as Pierre in Natasha Pierre in The Great Comet of 1812. But they have written some original music for us tonight. They have collaborated with a team of writers to write their own jokes. It's going to be a spectacle, to be sure. We're excited to see the best musical nominees perform. Frozen is performing with Casey Levy as Elsa and Patty Murin as Anna. We have a number from SpongeBob, which of course has nominees across the board. 12 nominations for SpongeBob, tied with 12 nominations for Mean Girls leading the pack. They're going to perform tonight, as well as the band's visit, of course. I can't wait to hear all of it. Josh Groban and SpongeBob, it would be great. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
what more Tony history can I tell you? I can tell you that Angels in America, while we're speaking about, while we're getting to, ready to speak about plays, Angels in America is the most Tony nominated play in history with 11 nominations. It eked out The Coast of Utopia, which was a three part epic in 2007. That was nominated for 10 Tony Awards. It won seven. We'll have to see if Angels can break that record as well. But for now, it has broken the record as the most nominated play, which reminds me of going to Playbill.com to read about all of the most nominated people. It's insane to know that there are people out there who have been nominated 23 times looking at you, Best Orchestrator, Jonathan Tunick, who is also nominated tonight for Carousel. Hal Prince with 21 career Tony nominations. He's also the most Tony nominated director. The most Tony non nominated actors, actresses, they are all in there. The most Tony nominated choreographer is Bob Fosse. And let me tell you, Chris Catelli with two nominations tonight, maybe on his way to greatness, he won a Tony for Newsies and was previously nominated for South Pacific as well as The King and I. So his tally is escalating as well. So thrilling that he's nominated for Spongebob and My Fair Lady, two very different shows. It's amazing to see his skill set and his versatility and the dancers that he works with are so different. It's fantastic. If you guys have questions for any of the nominees as I'm rattling them off, whether they are creatives, choreographers, designers, actors, possible presenters who you read about on Playbill.com, comment below. We'll be happy to do our best to ask your questions of all of the people on this carpet. Dane Laffrey, who is the scenic designer of Once on this Island on the carpet right now, we'll get him momentarily. As you can see, it's a crowded, crowded night. <laughs> All right, so excited to see SpongeBob perform. They're currently at the Palace Theater. Again, they won the Drama Desk for Outstanding Musical, the Drama Desk for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Musical, as well as Direction for Tina Landau. We'll have to see. They're nominated across those three categories as well this evening, so we'll have to see how they do. This is a pretty cool season on Broadway. I'm just taking a deep breath and taking it all in. There are some phenomenal stories tonight as well, personal stories. One of the ones that comes to mind is the band's visit. That is just the little engine that could. It's a really quiet musical. It's an intimate musical. It opened in the fall after a very successful run off-Broadway at the Atlantic Theater. But I'm thinking specifically of the story about Ariel Stachel, who is nominated tonight for Best Featured Actor in a Musical. We'll see him at some point, I promise. And Itai Benson. The two of them play Khalid and Poppy, respectively. Khalid is the Egyptian musician um, in the Alexandria Police Orchestra, who gets stranded in the town of Bet HaTikva in Israel. And Poppy is a young Israeli who is bored out of his mind, very resigned, but also bashful when it comes to girls. And the relationship between those two characters that it evolves over the show is one of my favorites. And then I found out that the two of them are best friends. And not only did they read for these parts together in auditions, they prepared for their auditions together. It was their dream to share these roles on Broadway side by side. You can read the full story at Playbill.com. We're also going to hear from amazing composers tonight, Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. Um, Bobby Lopez is a double EGOT winner thanks to the Oscars this year when he and Kristen won together for Best Original Song for Coco's Remember Me. They won for Let It Go for Frozen back in 2013, and now Frozen is on Broadway. They did a fantastic video with us all about the writing process of Monster, which is a new song. For those of you who haven't seen Frozen, it has all of these new songs. It has all the ones that you love, Love is an Open Door, First Time and Forever, Let It Go, and it's got great new songs like True Love and Monster, and Bobby and Kristen broke down their writing process for us at the piano. So if you want to watch that video, take the six minutes, go to playbill.com slash frozen monster. That's the best we could do for you guys to be able to remember it. <laughs> I'm loving that people feel so passionately about the Tonys that they're 
upset about stuff from last year. Don't I know it, you guys. Not everybody can win, but we hope that it's the wealth is spread. One of the most nominated shows tonight is Carousel, a beautiful revival of Rodgers and Hammerstein's classic. Ten Tony nominations. One of them is for Justin Peck and his choreography. It's his Broadway debut. He won the Drama Desk as well. And for those classical dance fans out there, he is the resident choreographer of the New York City Ballet and has brought his talent over here as well as the talents of New York City ballet dancers Amar Ramasar and Brittany Pollock, who are now in the show. Louise, played by Brittany, and Jigger, played by Amar. And it's unreal to see his choreography on stage. It's so athletic, it's so intense. There are so many beautiful images and pictures that he's creating. It's quite the sight to see in terms of dance on Broadway. Also nominated in that category is a personal favorite of mine, Mr. Stephen Hoggett, for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It's unconventional that we have a nominee from a play in the choreography category, but not a first because Stephen Hoggett has also been nominated for The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime for his choreography. There have also been a handful of others here and there. And Adrian Sutton is actually nominated as a composer for Best Original Score for Angels in America. So it's not musical exclusive. You gotta earn it to get in there. I see we have Jesse Mueller fans out there. There are lots of Carousel fans. I know there are some people who we wish could be nominated. There just aren't enough, aren't enough slots. Yes, please. We're going to have Mr. Jonathan Tunick on the live stream. He won the Drama Desk for his orchestrations of Carousel and is a Tony nominee tonight. Mr. Tunick, Ruthie from Playbill. Such a pleasure to meet you. Here, scooch in a little. We want to make sure that you're on the camera. We're live. Congratulations on your Drama Desk and now your nomination here. We were doing some research and we found out that you are the most Tony nominated orchestrator in Tony history. Did you know that? I didn't know that. As of this year, 23 times. 11 arrests, but only one conviction. <laughs> it's true, but fantastic work nonetheless. What was it like to be able to have such a full string section at your disposal, such a full orchestra on the whole? Isn't that great? It's just, we don't get to hear that so much anymore. No. And, and it gives us a chance to show what we can do. The orchestra can do so much for the theater. And when we're held down to just a few players, it, it, it really cuts down you our, our, our ability to express I loved that I sat down and got to hear an overture. What was it like to to revisit that piece? I mean, revisiting a piece of music in to begin with, do you have certain rules you have to follow because it's Rodgers and Hammerstein? Are you given free reign? Well, you, you feel a responsibility. And uh, first and foremost, it, it should sound like Rodgers and Hammerstein. It shouldn't sound like something somebody's weird idea of Rogers and Hammerstein. And I, uh, I, I can tell you that the Carousel Waltz, which is a mainstay of, of uh, Pops concerts and theater, is always played with cuts. You can't find a recording until now. And the cast album is out as of June 8th. uncut. And you know what? It holds together better without the cuts. Well, of course it does. That's how it was intended. Well, thank Makes you sense. so much for taking the time to speak with us. We wish you all the best of luck inside. Thank and you. congratulations. One of the best orchestrators in Tony history. Congratulations to you as well. We all need your support. We need supportive spouses as well. Yes, bring in, bring them all in. Yes, I love, bring me my friend. Bring me my friend, Dane. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Congrat We're live, just so you know. Awesome. Heads up. Fantastic. This is Dane Laffrey, the inimitable scenic designer of the immersive Once on this Island. Congratulations. Thank you. You made it here. I know. It's overwhelming, I know. It really is. But I have to tell you, during our director's roundtable with Michael, he spoke about how he wanted all four elements earth, wind, fire, water, to be there for real. And suddenly, I thought to myself, and that's what Dane did.
did with all of it. You have all of the real earth, wind, fire, water. We do, we do, and I think it felt really, really important to sort of like ground the story and to keep us sort of centered and close, you know? I think like the idea of the audience with their feet in the sand that the actors are sharing is like, it's kind of sound bitey, but genuinely like that feels really important to me. I think that's an amazing thing. I think to like share the story that way and to be among these like very common, but sort of like immensely powerful elements because they are so, ubiquitous is is it's an important part of how the story is told. Well, and speaking of being surrounded, Circle in the Square is traditionally actually a thrust. People think of it as round, but it's actually just three sides. And then you guys took out those back, that you know, the backstage and yeah, made it yeah. a full circle. Tell me about that. Well, it was it, 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 we, it, it was one of the things in the design that required the most sort of like um, trial and error to really figure out how to like complete that circle. I mean, it's not totally complete because like an 18 wheeler crashes through one side of it, but um, but but how we like wrap that around so it felt like a part of the room and there's actually a lot of like architecture around those seats that help, that look like they're the walls of the theater, but they're not to help kind of like... Right, you rebuilt yeah. fake cinder block walls around yeah, so that yeah, we yeah. feel like we're backstage. Yeah, and also so that the theater could feel like it was, you know, falling in a bit, that it was having its own experience of natural disaster mm -hmm. and peril. Yeah. Well, if you haven't watched our set tour, which I think you should go visit Playbill.com and do, but I learned on our set tour that that water feature is moving, that you, like, engineered an irrigation system. Tell me why you had to do that. Well, it's the only way it would look like water is the trick of it. The, you know, when water is not moving, it just looks like mirror like glass, or glass. So in addition to like blinding a bunch of people with stage lights, you really wouldn't be able to tell what you were looking at. So the movement is critical. There's not a lot of water in there, but the fact that it's moving and, and agitating, you're like that just completely makes the effect. Amazing. Well, Dane, we thank you so much for your work. Thank you and Michael, working. roommates in high school, now design partners and creative partners on Broadway. It's really inspiring. It's thank you so thank much. You. Good and best of luck tonight, Dan Laffer, you guys, nominated for his scenic design of Once on this Island. It's an Aarons and Flaherty classic coming back to Broadway. Lynn Aarons is one of the many women. I spoke to 10 women for this very special piece that is running in the Tony Awards Playbill. It is online if you want to Google around for 10 powerhouse women in this moment of change. And Lynn Aarons was one of the women I spoke to. She wrote lyrics for Ragtime. She wrote lyrics for Anastasia. She's so proud to have two shows on Broadway. They wrote Susicle together. They wrote Rocky together. They wrote Lucky Stiff together. When I think that she's the woman who wrote Journey to the Past, Make Them Hear You, One Small Girl. I mean, how many iconic moments can a person deliver to us? Lynn Ahrens, we love you. Of course, she and Steven are not nominated tonight because it is a revival, so they're not eligible. But we're wishing their show all the best of luck. And she had such wonderful things to say about her start in the theater business, how she makes it a priority to bring up other young women, to mentor them. She calls them her trailing robe. And what a robe to latch onto, Lynn Ahrens. So we have her here tonight. What else is not... So in the best revival of a musical category, we have Once on this Island, we have Carousel, and we have My Fair Lady from Lincoln Center Theater, directed by Bartlett Shear. It's his eighth Tony nomination for Best Direction of a Musical. He's the resident director there at Lincoln Center. For those of you who don't know, Lincoln Center is part of the Broadway community. It's a little farther north, but it is a big enough house and within the district, and even though it's a nonprofit, there are three major theater owners, but then there are also three nonprofits: Manhattan Theater Club, Roundabout Theater Club, Roundabout Theater Company, excuse me, and Lincoln Center Theater. Lincoln Center Theater's revival of My Fair Lady is stunning. Michael Jurgen's design is massive. He's the scenic designer of that show. Henry Higgins' study is unlike anything you've ever seen. More than in the movie, more than on a soundstage, I've, I've never seen a bigger piece of scenery in my life, not even the boat in The King and I, for those of you who saw that production. He collaborated with Katherine Zuber on her costumes, who won for Best Costume of a Musical this year's Drama Desk. Also Donald Holder on lighting. It's a team that works together again and again, and as Bartlett said, 
during our director's roundtable, it's like a band that stays together and gets better year after year after year. We are going to take another look at the prom. For those of you just tuning in, new musical coming this fall to the stage, Broadway's Court Theater, directed by Casey Nicola, written by Bob Martin of The Drowsy Chaperone, Matt Sklar of The Wedding Singer, and Chad Beglin, most recently of Aladdin. Here, take another look. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Tony Welcome Knight, back Tony to Tony Knight. Knight with Beth and Josh. Yes. We should have a jingle. Okay. Tony Knight with Beth and Josh. Beth and it's really great in the sweet squash. <laughs> anyway, so we were just talking about if I could play Dee Dee for one performance because it'd be really good and I look great in animal print. What do you say? One performance. No. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. So how about this? Why don't you tell us what your favorite thing about doing live theater is? Oh my gosh. That's a great question. Thank you. You're welcome. One of the things I love about doing live theater is in that moment, in that eight show a week, that moment only happens one time with an audience. It can never be duplicated. That experience from audience to actor and your storyteller to story listeners, that's what I love about it. And each show is different because of that and can never be repeated. Oh, I, I love, love live theater. Now, if you could be asked one question on the red carpet, what would you be asked? Um, I would like it if somebody said, can I bring you a snack? <laughs> That's genius. Okay, we're going right back down to the red carpet because you never know what Laura Osnes might be wearing. Welcome back, you guys, to the red carpet of the 2018 Tony Awards. I am outside Radio City Music Hall in Midtown Manhattan gearing up for Broadway's biggest night. I don't know if you've been watching all the tweets go by today. I love seeing last year's nominees wishing everyone good luck. Kate Baldwin was on there wishing luck. Benj and Justin, who won last year for Dear Evan Hansen. There's just a community full of love that I love to see. Jamie Parker is here on the red carpet. He's nominated tonight as Harry Potter in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Who else am I seeing? There's a lot of glam going on. I saw people were looking, will Melissa Benoist be here? She is scheduled to be here. We will do our very best to get her on the live stream. She is one of the presenters tonight. She's making her Broadway debut as Carol King in Beautiful, the Carol King musical, just this past week. Hugely thrilling for those of you who are fans of Supergirl. All right, we're gonna grab, can we, can we grab Jamie Parker? Can we grab Jamie? Okay, all right, Jamie Parker, if you wanna hear what he has to say, go to playbill.com because we did a fantastic interview with him all about inhabiting the boy who lived and what it was like to read seven books as source material for a character. It's not so often you have more than the play script itself, but Jamie did. All right. No, this is what live, this is what Facebook Live is all about, having live people. Laura Osnes and her husband Nathan Johnson are here. For those of you who are Bandstand fans, it's coming to movie theaters June 23rd, I believe. Buy your tickets, fathomevents.com. Very exciting to have them on the red carpet. Laura is a vision in pink tonight. I wonder if she's rooting for Mean Girls. We'll have to ask her. If you guys have questions for Laura, for Nathan, comment below. Who else do I see on the carpet? I see Justin Peck nominated for best choreography tonight. We'll grab him. I see the bottleneck. It's about to release, you guys, and then all of the nominees will be here super quickly. Just trying to keep tabs for you. If you guys have questions, please comment below. Yes, please talk to Madison Strauss. I am going to talk to Laura just for you. Who are you rooting for out there tonight, though? I see a lot of people are upset that Groundhog Day didn't do better last year. There have been reunion concerts at 54 Below here in New York City, if you've been here. We're going to ask Laura Osnes what's next for her. I know that she was in developmental readings for Crazy For You, which had a concert showing at Lincoln Center, which now feels like forever ago. But alas, it was not forever ago. She and Tony Yazbek did that with Rachel Bloom, who's also supposed to be here tonight. We're going to grab Laura. Hi. You look amazing. 
So are you. you are glowing. Thank you. So are you. You're a vision in pink. Thank you. I, I did mean, not know this was going to be the backdrop, but hey. I always, I've always, i never, I've only worn a bright color once to the Tony's. Really? Like a green dress. Okay, so what made you go bright this year? I just thought it was time. It's I was time. like, you know what? I'm not nominated this year. I'm not in a show. There's le there's, no, there's less, less stakes. Less stakes. So I was like, oh, I can be a little adventurous and like wear something bold. And wear something like a Broadway princess party. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I have my little like updo. My cinder, yeah, it's fun. Bandstand is coming to theaters in just a couple short weeks. Tell me how excited you guys are. Have you guys been like texting each other? What's new with the Donnie Nova band? Yes, the DNB um, had a, we had a reunion show on Memorial Day at Birdland. So, yes, we um, that was fun, and then we're playing two more concerts in You're Buffalo, New York, and Vegas in June and July. So we're super excited, and yes, getting ready for the film. Um, it airs June 25th and 28th in movie theaters across the country. And yes, we're like nervous and, and excited, I guess. Like I've never seen myself on a big screen right. before. I've never done a movie, and so I'm a little like, I hope I'm good. Like, I just don't know. You just don't know. Um, spoiler alert, she is. Uh, <laughs> you, seen, you haven't seen the movie, right? I haven't seen the movie yet, but I saw the show three times, so it's I know. I'm the biggest fan. Thank I you really love you. that show. Everyone wants to know what's next for you. Um, I am hoping to do Crazy for You That's on Broadway next we're season. Waiting. We're yeah, we're waiting crazy. for a theater. Um, and in the meantime, I'm doing Princess Party concerts everywhere, which is super exciting. Hoping to come to a city near all of you soon. And what you had such an amazing catapult to Broadway with Greece, you're the one that I want. What is your best advice for people once they get here to keep going? Because it's so amazing that you came that way, but you stayed. Thank you for saying that. Um, I did take it very seriously, to be honest. This has been my dream since I was little, so I didn't want that reality show to just kind of put me on the map and then fade into obscurity. Um, so I took very good care of myself health-wise, which is something that people don't really even think about early on. I wanted to establish a good reputation. <laughs> um, and so, I, yeah, I took, I tried to just stay healthy, and I, like, showed up and wanted to be there every day to work. And I feel like being nice to people on the way up. so matters. It seems, like, cliche, but it's, I feel like that's part of the reason. It's like, you work hard, you have the natural talent, but you also just are nice to people. And just keep auditioning, keep putting yourself out there and waiting for the right door to open. Wise words from Miss Laura Osnes. All right, go have a blast okay. in there. Thank you so much. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Rosie. All right, we're going to have Justin Peck on the carpet next. I was trying to get, we'll see if I can get Miss Cheetah Rivera back here. I know her assistant because we have been on a Playbill cruise together, but we're going to see if I can get it done. We're going to see, maybe Felicia can do it. Call to Rosie and tell her that Ruthie is on the carpet. Rosie has rosy hair and she's with Cheetah. We're going to try and get her back here. We'll see if we can get her to backtrack. Justin's talking to another outlet here. Literally anyone from SpongeBob, please. No one from SpongeBob has arrived yet. I haven't seen anyone except for David Zinn, who did the sets and costumes for SpongeBob. I'm hoping that he'll come back this way. But there have been no stars from SpongeBob yet. I have my eyes peeled for you, my friends. I see there must be some Jennifer Lee, Tony nominated for her best book of a musical for Frozen is here. Ashley Park is here. Cynthia Erivo is here. I'm going to turn a little this way so I can see who's coming down the down the pike. Who else do we have? I see Brian Tyree Henry nominated for Lobby Hero. For those of you who are fans of Atlanta, you'll know him. He was also nominated for his guest role last year for This Is Us when he played Ron Cephas Jones' cousin in the show, William's cousin. And he's a star. He started out on Broadway in the Book of Mormon as the general. And speaking of the Book of Mormon, I see Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez. All right, we're going to get Cheetah back here. I think we have Justin Peck first. All right, we've got Justin and then Cheetah. Talk about dancing. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you? Good. Welcome back to the States. Thank you. I'm, I'm back. Here. You've been traveling quite a bit, sir. I have. I was in Europe. I was in Germany and Prague. Choreographing? Yes. I was working on one of my ballets called Heatscape for the Semper Opera Ballet in Dresden. So. Amazing. 
happening? Well, I've been telling everyone how happy we are that you have brought yourself to Broadway. We were talking to Jonathan Tunick about that gorgeous prologue and working with his orchestra. How much does the music feed you and what you do in combination with the story that you have to tell? I mean, the music for me is always the starting point, and it's always kind of like my blueprint, my guide, my inspiration for the entire process. So, um, so it's very important. Um, and then, obviously, with a project like Carousel, uh, the narrative is uh, essential and and uh, and also very important. And so, it's a combination of those two things that uh, um, you know it's a little different for me, but um, it's a good challenge, I think, at this point. You won the Drama Desk last week. Congratulations. Thank you. Was that a feeling of like being truly accepted into this community for you? Did yeah. it change anything? You know, it was a really special moment for me. I um, I think one of the best things about this experience for me personally is getting a chance to um, to interact with this community and um, and rub shoulders with so many artists that I admire and respect and um, and so it was this great, great moment there, except that I froze about like halfway through my speech because I realized that there were, You were great. You <laughs> there, were great. There were some like amazing playwrights out in the audience like... Oh, and going, you suddenly could see them. Yeah, and then I was like, oh God, they're good with words, and I'm not, so... <laughs> You're good with movement, and that's what matters most tonight. There you go. Thank Congratulations you. and best Thank of you all. so much. Thanks. Justin Peck, you guys. For, nominated tonight for Best Choreography for Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel. All right. We have people, yes, we have Jennifer Lee is next to me. David Yazbek is on the carpet. Brandon Victor Dixon is next to me. We'll see if we can get him to talk. Who watched Jesus Christ Superstar live out there? Because I watched it and I was dying. All right, Jennifer Lee. Hi, Ruthie from Playbill. Great to see you again. Jennifer did this phenomenal piece for us where you annotated the script pages from the scene that leads up to What Do You Know About Love? Just tell me, was there another scene that you loved being able to dig into for a second time and revisit in the show? Oh, there are so many. I, um, it's hard. There, one of the fun scenes for me was actually when Anna meets Hans and really getting deeper into her neuroses was fun. Weselton showing the true masochist he was. Love Robert Crichton. He's amazing. And seeing how Anna takes him down. Um, but then really being able to go into the heart of these girls, each one of their scenes, we got deeper, we got more raw and real. And I think that was what I was most excited about, to really show you the complexity of, of these women and what they fought for. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for your beautiful work and best of luck tonight. Jennifer Lee, you guys, Oscar-winning director and screenwriter for Frozen, and now nominated for a Tony for her Broadway debut. Hello, Miss Cheetah Rivera. It is bright on this carpet. Congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award. What has given you the ability to have such longevity in your career? Well, that's difficult to say. Well, in my career, I think um, I was ready when I was asked to do whatever it is. But I've worked with the greatest people in the business. And I've been doing the most amazing kind of work. The Bob Fosses, the Jerry Robbins. You know, you can't, you can't. People ask me, what's your favorite? I can't give a favorite. So the love of all of that and wanting just to live in the theater is the thing that is my food. Well, it's our lucky gift. You've been to many Tony Awards. You've performed on the Tony Awards. Do you have a favorite Tony Awards memory? Not particularly, except when I won. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. Count them. Count them. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. And congratulations again on the Cheetah Rivera Awards. Fully established now, second year. I want the kids to look forward to getting one of those because they really have to work for it. You hear that, dancers out there? Work for it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We have best... Original score nominee, Mr. David Yazbek. Thank you so much. Hello, my friend. Let's we, go in. We yeah. invite all, all right. because you can't do this alone. So welcome to the red carpet as well. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. You look very dapper. I always love a good hat. Yeah, I'm going to wear the hat tonight. That's yeah. just the style. Um, 
we talked so much about this score. I want to know, you mentioned that your kind of thesis line was Tafik's line of, I didn't understand him. Itamar mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about how that guided what you did musically. Well, the, the whole show is about breaking down the barriers and the walls that, and they're all man-made, that stand between people understanding each other and people connecting. And that's how it influenced it. Beautiful. I'm obsessed with your orchestrations for this piece, which I know you had Jamshid Sharifi on this, but you were able to bring in so much of that Arabic flavor. How much were you working with him? How much were you working with your sound designer, Kai Harada, to make sure that everything has that authentic sound? Um, it's been a really deep and amazing collaboration with everybody. I think everyone was on the same page from the beginning, to use a cliche. Um, and uh, I think the... the uh, unsung hero of all of this uh, aside from the great band these amazing musicians was the guy who went, went looking for these musicians Dean Sharonow our uh, music supervisor and, and uh, uh, contractor um, we talked with Itamar your, who is nominated for best book of a musical about how he wrote it kind of as a play and then you took from that about what to musicalize we know that you were kind of trying to write a song for Tafik and it didn't work and it's great because it's just right that way. Was there another thing that you found that was either missing, that you were like, no, we do need a song here after this first draft, or another thing that you had written and said, actually, no? I made a lot of stabs at songs that just didn't, didn't work with the tone that we were creating, and I just threw them out. You, gotta throw, you can't be precious. You can't. It's a subtractive art form to a large extent. Well, best of luck tonight. We're cheering for you. Thank you so much. All right. I know you guys are clamoring for SpongeBob people. Lily Cooper is here. Kyle Jarrow is here. Danny Skinner is here. I'm going to do my best to get some people for you. Who do we have? I have Tell that longer, young Kyle. Don't worry. Okay, I have to wait for SpongeBob people first. We're going to get SpongeBob people first. Yeah. We'll take Danny if Danny wants to come over and say hello. People are loving Mr. Patrick Starr. I have Kristen and... Yes, absolutely. My friend Michael Strassheim of Disney is going to bring Kristen and Bobby Lopez over. For those of you Frozen fans, for those of you Avenue Q fans, for those of you In Transit fans. Alrighty. Thank you so much for tuning in on Playbill. We are so excited that you've chosen to join us. We know there are a lot of places you could do your Tony viewing. CBS is broadcasting the actual awards ceremony at 8 p.m. Eastern. Be sure to tune in to find out who of all of these beautiful people on the carpet turn out to be winners. Hello. Oh my gosh. She said she said she'd be the one in purple. I, I almost, I was like, maybe I'll go with the better fitting, like easier, more comfortable thing, but I'm really glad I went with the purple. It's glam. It's very regal. Wow, you look so much like Tita Rivera, I know, don't you? Oh my God. I know. The monitor is very behind. David Yazbek is stepping on Very like Kiss of the Spider Woman. Oh, congratulations. You guys made it to this night. I know. People are stepping on people. It's very chaotic. This is like... This is like Fairway on the weekend. Fairway on the weekend, yes. So we had the pleasure of talking to you about writing Monster. Stay yes. tuned because we also are going to show what it was like to write True Love. One of the things that By you said... By the way, I love yes. the, the headline of that piece. Kristen and Bobby Lopez break down writing Monster, which I think happened. <laughs> break down. Yes, they also <laughs> broke down. <laughs> they also had nervous breakdowns writing the song. Um, you have a great article in the Playbill that we're all going to get tonight. You. All about female women writers. on Broadway. I was going to say, and I love that article. Thank you. It made me cry. It was oh, so great. So that's well the written. only thing I want to hear. <laughs> well, tell me about being a woman on Broadway and how well, important Ruthie. that is. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, Bobby, why don't you tell them about being a woman on Broadway? Um, it's, hey, it's a good day for women on Broadway. Um, I, for me, for Nell Benjamin, for Tina Fey, for Jennifer Lee, um, for Tina Landau, for, uh, there are so many women. 
Bareilles. Sarah Bareilles hosting tonight. Yeah. Um, Dominated team for SpongeBob. And I hope she's singing. Um, I heard she's singing. Um, is she singing? Or did you hear? No, I heard she's singing. She better damn sing. She better sing. I mean, Neil Patrick Harris sang, so shouldn't she sing? Yeah, she needs to sing. I bet there's a great opening number, and I, I hope she hits some real high notes and just gives me chills. Yeah. It is. It's a good time. One of my favorite things, best book of a musical, Two Men, Two Women. How about that for some parody? I wonder that's, if that's the parody. first time. That, I know a lot of Tony history, but I'm not sure about that one. It could be. It very well could be. Um, but so it's exciting. How do you go from, like, talk to me about, is there pressure? Is it relief going from Oscar winning songs and your movie to then, oh gosh, we're putting this on stage now? Is that exciting? Is that terrifying? All of the above. All of the above. Um, but truly, uh, what we are focusing on today is that we get to write with each other. We are best friends. And we get to have this night where we get all fancy and we and we walk the carpet surrounded by the best of the Broadway community. It's this exciting time for our art form where it's doing so well, when new stories at, by new voices are being heard. Um, I mean, can't get better than this. <laughs> well, last question before you go. Your best advice for aspiring songwriters, because we always get advice for aspiring actors, but for aspiring songwriters. A lot of people ask me how they should become writers and haven't written anything yet. And um, the answer is just start, just write it. You know, write, write the thing that you want to write and keep, then keep writing because the first thing is probably not going to be the big thing. You got to keep doing it. Um, you got to get obsessed about it. I'd say resilience is really important. Um, you have to keep going, and sometimes not everyone will like what you do, and you have to get up and love what you do enough that you do it anyway. Get up every morning with a smile on your face. <laughs> Show the world all the love in your heart. Perfect. <laughs> You guys are great, and congratulations almost on 15 years of Avenue Q. Oh, yeah. About to celebrate a big anniversary. So, yeah, so you guys go on in. Congratulations. Exciting. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We've got more people. Who do we have? I'm looking around. Felicia's trying to wrangle for us. Yes. Okay, I got to grab Tom Kitt first. Hello. How are you? Nice to good. see you. Good. How are you? Nice to see you too. I'm good. Good. Nominated for best orchestrations for SpongeBob tonight. You had the formidable task of sewing all of these different songwriters together. Where, where do you start? What was the first song you start with? Wow. What was the first song I worked on? I think the first song I worked on was the opening number. Oh no! Actually, the first song I worked on was Best Day Ever, which the last um, song. Yeah. It was. Uh, and honestly, sometimes. The first song, when you when you break through and figure out what that's going to be, it kind of sets the tone. And I just heard this uh, Brian Wilson Beach Boys quality in the vocal arrangements. And once we brought it in and learned it, I knew it was happening in the show. The emotion of that moment, the heart of that moment, suddenly just sort of guided me. And and I followed instincts with every song. But I can't say enough about what the writers brought. They were so creative and and imaginative. You could really feel the passion, not just for SpongeBob, for, for the story we were telling, and for the art form of, of musical theater. What was it like to work with this talent, not just on the composing side, but you know, in development for so long, and to make things fit those characters and those actors? Uh, well, every show has its own trajectory. This was, for me, 2013 was the first year I worked on it. And it really evolved uh, as, a, as a collaborative effort. Tina Landau, I would follow her anywhere. She's so brilliant. Um, and, and she just set the tone for what this was going to be and the kind of artistry that was going to go into it. And she had real strong things to say about the score and how it was going to work. Together we would find um, underscoring and um, reprises because the more you identify musical themes and use them, the more, right, the more it, it feels, feels like a score and, exactly. and, 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 and you're, um, you're using these themes to tell stories. So it really was a group effort um, and, and you're only as good as your collaborators. Yeah. And I was thinking that you know, there have only been 10 ties in Tony history, and one of them was your well, next, was to next to normal. normal yeah. And if you do the math, 70-ish years, that's once every seven years. That was 2009. We're overdue for a tie. Wow. I don't know that it'll be in your category. We'll see. But 
Talk about winning as a tie. It's crazy. I, I think it's going to be exciting no matter what. Yeah. I'm so excited to be here and um, just looking around. It's, it's, the community is alive and well. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us. Tom Thank Kitt, you. you guys. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Take enjoy. Care. Yes. All right. Yes. Hi, Ruthie. Ruthie, very nice. Ruthie, Bill, nice to meet you too. Congratulations on the category coming back. It's a wonderful thing. Tell me what people should be listening for when they go to the theater and they're like, I don't know what best sound design is. That's a good question. That takes 25 minutes to answer. But uh, 25 seconds. 25 go. 25 seconds. Go. Uh, it's about uh, a, a sound design that helps support the storytelling of the show. Mm -hmm. So if it helps you understand or enlightens what you're watching, that's great sound design. Well, terrific. Congratulations on your nomination Thank for you Iceman much. Cometh, Mr. Dan Moses Schreier. Best of luck inside. Thank you so much. We have Noma Dumezwini is here for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I'm going to see if we can get Noma on the broadcast. We are going to see. We are. And Peggy and Jules, you guys, double nominated tonight. Jules Fisher and Peggy Eisenhower, lighting designers extraordinaire. Come, come, scooch in. This is a fabulous, glowing. You guys won the drama desk earlier this week. Congratulations! You're nominated for Once on This Island and for The Ice Man Cometh. Does light and design change based on play or musical, or is it always the same approach and discipline? I think musical involves much more fluid motion of lighting. We're involved with the emotion of a song, the emotion of a dance, how to follow dancers. Plays are a little more reserved. Right, and I would say actually every project, whether it's a play or a musical, is usually different in its own respect. So, and sometimes plays are very musical, and sometimes musicals are very uh, uh, scene oriented. So, like Carolina Chain. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Best of luck. And we found out that you are the most Tony-nominated lighting designer in Tony's history. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Best of luck. All right, I see Noma here. I see, who else do I see? I see Gavin Lee of SpongeBob is here. We're going to, yes, we're going to have Gavin here. Who else do I see? It is a busy, busy moment, you guys. All right. Norbert Leo Butts has not yet arrived to my sight lines, but I will do my best to get him here. I love Norbert, too. He's won twice before for Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and for Catch Me If You Can. We'll see. We'll try his luck here tonight. Alana Fritzinger really wants to see Gavin. I'm going to do my best. Oh, welcome back to our regulars. Billy Murphy, thanks for tuning in. All right. Who am I seeing? All right. Noma stopping by another outlet first. We're having we're having a pause. I see Marion Elliott nominated tonight for best direction of a play for Angels in America, which is the Tony most Tony nominated play in history. But you asked for Gavin, you asked for SpongeBob SquarePants people, and here we have him. Your fans are clamoring for you, sir. Gavin Lee nominated tonight. Squidward. Ah, tell me. Okay, so you sing "I'm Not a Loser," which I, is one of. I am not a loser tonight, but if I am, it doesn't matter. It I'm doesn't. I'm not a loser because I'm here talking to you at the Tonys in a Brooks Brothers tux. Well, Boom. ain't that the truth? <laughs> but there are so many double negatives in that song. Have you ever tripped up? No, I find with the lyrics for uh, "I'm Not a Loser." When I'm singing them every night, I don't think about them too much. I just let the rhythm come out of my mouth because you're, you're right. There's so many. I'm not, not, am. Uh, the ri ridiculous, if fabulous. If you think lyrics, about it, I think about it. I will say the wrong thing. So um, just sing the song and try and make it natural and don't think about what I'm saying next too much. Tell me about finding the Squidward voice. Well, um, when I first got my audition for the role, I obviously watched the TV show and, and binge watched and recorded um, Roger Bumpus's voice. He's the guy that does the fabulous Squidward voice. 
and um, practiced it, got it as good as I could. And then I was very glad when I walked into my first audition that Tina Landau, our director, said, I'm not looking for a Squidward voice. I'm looking for your interpretation of that character, which as an actor makes you go, oh, thank God. I haven't got to do a carbon copy of that cartoon. There are some amazing sound effects in this show, courtesy of Mike Dobson, the Foley artist, and Walter Trarbach, nominated together for sound design. Yep. Do you have to coordinate with him, like, the, the, the clomping and the squeaking and the that, like, suction cup noise of Squidward's walk? No, the amazing thing about Mike is he just follows you. And so we and do, he does it live every night. He's totally live. He's following... Basically, Ethan, SpongeBob, and my walking, because we both have a noise when we walk. But every sound you hear in our show is live, played by Mike. Every night, he never misses a beat. He's amazing. Well, we cannot wait to see your performance later on the broadcast. We're rooting for you. Congratulations. Thanks All the best of Mike and your Brooks Brothers Tuck. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. That's Gavin Lee for SpongeBob SquarePants, the musical on Broadway, nominated for 12 Tony Awards tonight. He is nominated for Best Featured Actress in a, Actor in a Musical. No, he, he, no. All right, I tried, you guys. We're trying for people. Oh, I have, hello, we have the darling Lindsay Mendes here. She's nominated tonight for Best Featured Actress in a Musical as Carrie Pipperidge in Carousel. It is one of the many roles that Audra McDonald won a Tony Award for back when it was the 1994 revival. And it's just a winning role. Joshua Henry. How are you? I'm great. You? Oh my gosh, your baby blue tux. Yeah. Always bringing the style. We try, we try. We had such an amazing conversation looking back at all of the roles that you've done on Broadway. So fun to look back with you. What is a Tony moment that you look back on, whether you witnessed it, whether you were in it? You know, one of the biggest Tony moments was, I gotta say, with In the Heights, rushing the stage after we won Best New Musical. I'll never forget it. I think I was 22 or 23, and we hoisted Lynn on our shoulders, and we were just celebrating. That was that was a huge highlight. That was, and you could... If you watched back in 2008, you could see that amazing, unexpected rush of energy. It was just so genuine. Yeah, I mean, we all knew about this piece that told all of our stories, and for the world to say, hey, this is just to elevate us like that, and to see Lynn's work just start. That was the beginning. That was the beginning. And now, you know. Now you can say you know him. That's right, that's right. <laughs> What is it about Carousel to you that makes it such a classic? I think for me the themes of love and redemption and uh, leaning into the themes of spirituality that this piece, I think that Jack O'Brien brings out so well, um, are what makes it resonate with me and, and, with, and with audiences. And I, the music, it just takes you to another place. Rodgers and Hammerstein, baby. It takes you to another place. It, it grabs hold of your heart and it doesn't let go. Um, so I think those themes and the music, really. Terrific. Last question for you. You're with Carousel for a little while, and I know you're going to like ride this post-Tony wave when you actually only have to worry about your shows. But what is it, what's next for you? What's, it, what's, what's the next dream? The next dream is being formulated right now, but I think it has a lot to do with music. Um, you know, there are, I love theater, so I'll be doing this show for a little while. And, but there's some things in, in film and TV that are also heating up as well. So, uh, oh, seeing you on the screen at home. Hey, see you soon. I just want Bigelow Flows. Bigelow well, Flows Bigelow concert, flows. please. Bigelow Flows. That's that's not stopping. So uh, there's another one tomorrow that's going to be released. Holler at me at uh, Joshua Henry Official. On Instagram, you guys, if you're not following it, get your butt to Instagram. All right, congratulations. See you. Fantastic to see you. Mr. Joshua Henry, he is nominated for the third time tonight. He was previously nominated for the Scottsboro Boys, and I am blanking on the second one. But he's nominated tonight as Billy Bigelow in Carousel, and he made his Broadway debut with In the Heights. If you didn't see Chris Jackson do it, and you saw an understudy, you may well have seen Joshua Henry. I love his work 
Of course, his second Tony nomination was for Violet. He was Flick in Violet opposite Sutton Foster and Colin Donnell. Speaking of Colin Donnell, he's going to be on stage at New York City Center coming up in Jason Robert Brown's song cycle, Songs for a New World, alongside Mr. Michael Kilgore as well. Phenomenal voices, all of them. Lindsay Mendez is going to be coming on the carpet. His carousel castmate, she's right next to me. I adore this woman. I know you do too from Wicked and Dogfight. It is so cool to see her sing in this really classic type of musical theater. There's nothing her voice can't do. Hello! It's the blushing nude it's, it's moment. A, it's a blush moment. Congratulations, you have finally made it. We are here. It is happening. I mean, does it just feel like the longest journey in tonight? I mean, you mean like from the nomination or? From like, you get cast in this classic musical and then, you know, you guys open and you think that's the hurdle, but then you get the nomination and now here's another hurdle. Yeah, I can say that I thought that like, I thought it felt long, but now that I'm here, I'm like, oh, this just flew by. So I, I, I felt both ways about it. What is the key to your ridiculous vocal versatility from Alphaba to now Carrie Pippridge and singing so classically? You know, it's um, it's it's work. It's you know, I, I study with a teacher, and um, I I love to be a student, and I love to do things that scare me, and and this definitely scared the hell out of me. So. It, it was, um, I think I work best under pressure. You told me on nomination day that you hope that people leave thinking, I want Carrie to be my best friend. That's right. Which I love. What is the quality or the trait in her that helps you, that you bring forward to make people hope that? Um, I, I try to bring her joy and her, um, she, she's so open and uh, she really just like is ready for anything on a dime. She doesn't like take a lot of time to think about things and I don't know, I kind of love that. I love how impulsive she is. Yeah. Well, fantastic. We're wishing you so much luck. You've got a lot of fans out there. Oh my God. So, Lindsay Mendez here for you. All right, break a leg. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you. All right, Cynthia Rivo's running inside. She has to get inside, you guys. We have the Flaming Lips here, who is one of the writers of SpongeBob SquarePants, nominated tonight for Best Score for SpongeBob. Who else is here? Jordan Roth is here, theater owner, producer extraordinaire. You may have seen him in Vogue. He's also a fashion queen. We love him. All right, I'm looking around to make sure we're not missing other people. Marianne Elliott is here. Hello. All right, hello. Hi, Ruthie hey. from Playbill. What'd you say your name was? My name is Ruthie. Ruthie, I love you. Hello. hello. Ruthie, I am obsessed with this look. You guys are ready for SpongeBob. We are, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're part of the production here. Yeah. Yeah, Tell me, what it, was it a strange writing process for you to just say, we need a song that accomplishes this. Write it. Well, luckily, I mean, we had been part of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie way back in the 1970s, I think it was. A long time ago now, anyway. <laughs> um, and I think, I think the, the music supervisors and the producers, they had a sense of how the Flaming Lips could fit into this. And so, you know, it's in the very beginning, it was kind of a doomsday it's, right. you know, it's, it's the end right. of the, the plot time. of Spongebob is that Mount Humongous going, is going to erupt and they all have to evacuate because the world is ending. Right. The world was ending. So in the very beginning, I don't think they knew exactly how it was going to end. But there was a sense that it was going to end. And because it's Spongebob Squarepants, it still is very optimistic. And I think in the very beginning, they said, we think the Flaming Lips could do that. And I said, I, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> But then it's a great, great leap for them to really make it work within the context of their story and as their story changed and grew. So, yeah, I don't think you put that much, you know, you try not to think about it that much because you want them to make it work. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to have to be so specific to what we have done to it. But I think it's absolutely thousand times better than the little thing that we handed them yeah. five years ago. Well, so special. Thank you so much well, for you. joining us yeah. tonight. Yeah, Best of sure. luck in there. Thank you. Thank We're you. We're going to see if we can grab. Who do we have? Jordan Roth is here on the carpet. 
Norbert Leo Butts is in the house. I'm keeping my eye out for him. Who else do I see? Miss Christine Baranski, who is presenting this evening, walking by. A lot of the presenters aren't able to stop because they have to get in there to present. Who else do I see? I see. I'm trying to keep my eyes out for you guys. Doing all, all the jobs this evening. Talent Wrangler, host. Hope you're following on at Playbill's Instagram to see all of the things that Felicia is capturing this evening. She's a rock star. Hope you're watching on Twitter. We have our countdown going on. I have not seen Andrew Rannells yet. I have not seen Melissa Benoist yet. But I am keeping my eye out for you. Who do I see? Is that? I might see Jesse Mueller. Unclear. I see. Who do I see? Norbert Leo Butts is coming to us, you guys. It's happening. Sure. Yeah, if she wants to come into the camera. Hello. Ruthie from Playbill. Ruby? Ruthie. Ruthie. So nice to meet you. Come come in this way. Oh, okay. Just right straight to camera. The monitor doesn't look like it, but you're here. You're live. Um, I heard a fun story that you were the voice of Mulan. Yes, I am. And the singing voice of Mulan is performing on the Tonys tonight. That's right. Leia yes. Do you guys know each other? We are good friends. Ah, I love that. And she's that. amazing on, uh, in Once on This Island. Isn't she? Yes. What award are you presenting tonight? Do you know? I'm presenting a very special award. It's in association with Carnegie Mellon University. Yes, for educator, excellence yes. in education. Yes, and I believe that the recipient tonight, um, I can't give it away, but it's a very special one, and we're honoring her, and um, I'm, I'm just really thrilled to be here. Absolutely. And when do we get to see you in the theater? Well, um, it's been a while, and I can't wait to come back. Uh, my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. job keeps me in L.A. It keeps you busy. It does, but one day. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Congratulations. This dress is unbelievable, you guys. Who are you wearing? I'm wearing Mark Zunino. It's a good friend of mine. Gorgeous. All right, look for it on the Instagram. We've got Norbert Leo Butts coming to us live. I know you guys asked about him. Here is Mr. Alfred P. Doolittle. Hi, great to see you. Congratulations. Oh, does it feel like home coming back here? I feel a lot more relaxed this year. And I don't know, maybe it's my fourth time having the privilege of getting invited. And um, I don't know. And I'm older, <laughs> as we all are. Um, and it just feels great, man, uh, to, to, to just enjoy it. And, my wife and I, she looks amazing, and we get to have a date She's night. She's in and green, yeah, that gorgeous and green, yes. No. So we're having a ball. Awesome. Are you performing tonight? I do, unbelievably, in 10 minutes after I, I leave say, you. So like, what I is gotta that? go backstage, do say, a whole costume that's change. That's the thing, that's the rigmarole. You get all dressed in this tux, and then they're like, by the way, but get in here. After your... my number, I have under 15 minutes to get back into a tux, back into my seat for my category. The magic of theater, folks. I'm going to be all kinds of glowing and sweating and spritzing. And Have you met or gotten together with your fellow nominees in your category? Oh, yeah, yeah. We all met. There's a luncheon that the, that the league does, and it's lovely because it's not too much hoopla, and, and you can just really sit down, and we did selfies, yeah. And Gavin Lee who's in my category, is a dear friend of mine. He lives down the street from me in New Jersey. Our daughters went to Neighbors. kindergarten together. And so uh, I'm actually really rooting for him. So, oh, um, that's yeah. so exciting. Yeah. I also want to know, get me to the church on time. Were you expecting it to be as raucous a number as it is? I, I, I didn't. I didn't know what to expect. I, I was scared of it. it um, <laughs> it's really, really big. And the guy who created this part, Stanley Holloway, in the film is so iconic, and um, and that's really all he does I in the second like act. He, I was like, man, if this doesn't go well, I'm I'm screwed, you know. No, but I feel like, I mean, between this and Don't Break the Rules and Dirty Rotten, I mean, like, you you do a great showstopper. Thank what's you. The, what's the key to the great showstopper? I don't know. <laughs> I, I I really don't know. Well, those are all great choreographers and a great piece of music, obviously. 
But I really do, it, uh, it, it, when the story gets moving, you get really wrapped up in the story and I just get extremely excited and it fills me with, with energy and I, I, I've loved it. I've loved to dance since I was a kid, you know? Yes. I've you never can tell taken that a you love in my it. life, but I... Doesn't matter, doesn't I matter. Alone. You mentioned on opening night that you had been looking forward to working with Bart Shear. Yeah. What was the most rewarding part of that experience for you? Wow, that's that's hard to answer in a quick interview because he's so gifted. But Bart is Bart is just um, you know what he is. He's like the Brilliant. he's like the coolest grad school teacher you ever could have. Like the girls crush out, on, the guys probably crush out on him too, just because he's he's super oh. curious mm -hmm. about his work. He gets you excited about the ideas. Everybody starts reading. I don't know. There's sort of like a, the room is filled with ideas. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's rare that you get that in the theater ever, especially in a musical. Um, so it's, it's, it's amazing. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. Norbert Leo Butts, you guys. Hi. Hi. Sure. I have to grab Lauren. Oh, Lauren Riloff is going. She'll come back to us. But yes, Lynn Meadow, artistic director of Manhattan Theater Club. Hi, Ruthie. Come on in. Come on in this way. Congratulations tonight. Thank you. Such beautiful work you have put up on stage. But also, I just want to shout out to you. We've been talking about women on Broadway. Tell me about being a woman artistic director on Broadway. Uh, being a woman artistic director on Broadway, off Broadway, anywhere is just a great gift and uh, there are more and more of us and I've been around doing it for a while but I still feel as if it's my first couple of months of doing it. I'm as excited as, I, as I've always been. The great thing about Broadway is I get to walk in the stage door and that's really exciting and to see to be behind the scenes for plays like The Children, Lucy Kirkwood's play that's nominated tonight, and St. Joan, which Condola Rashad is nominated for Best Actress. So, exciting. so um, I feel like being an artistic director is, has a, carries a real responsibility, and uh, particularly now, and it's a responsibility to entertain people, but to make people think, to make people talk, and to really show us at our best. We're humans, and the theater paints humans and, Absolutely. and our humanity. Well, thank you so much. Lynn Meadow, congratulations tonight on your nominations for Manhattan Theater Club. We're going to grab Miss Nell Benjamin, nominated tonight as part of the team who wrote the Mean Girls score. Lyrics by Nell Benjamin. It is her second nomination, her second time on Broadway. You may know her lyrics from a little thing called Legally Blonde the Musical, now Mean Girls. Here, come on in this way. Right in here. Scooch on over. We're going to get cozy. Okay, fine. I like that. I love this dress. Thank you. Congratulations on being nominated. Thank you. It's very exciting. I mean, nominated for lyrics, when you're working with a book writer like Tina Fey, like how much does that raise your level? How much do you guys have to find where your humor meets each other? Well, working with Tina Fey will raise your level, like period. Uh, and I'm just very happy to have been nominated so that there is some acknowledgement that I didn't drag her down. So that's good. That's really good. Definitely she is, not. All of it funny. elevates together. Yeah, she's a funny lady. She's brilliant. Uh, and this movie was very much her baby. And so I wanted to be at the level of Tina and Jeff and Casey. And hopefully I have been. I was talking to Kate Rockwell at the Drama Desk nominees reception about how the key for her Karen was to not get ahead of her. And I was listening to a song called Sexy. And that song is like the perfect example of her being exactly at the pace that she's at, but it's the lyrics that bring that humor. Tell me about writing that song. It's not one we've talked about a lot. Oh, that was a fun one because, um, you know, the movie has that riff about how uh, women tend to dress young women sexy for Halloween rather than anything. The one night they have permission. And so I was looking around, and, and actually we were working on it right around Halloween, and so you would just go to the Halloween costume store and you're like, wow, they can really, they'll make anything sexy, won't they? That's just startlingly inappropriate. So, uh, so it was trying, the challenge was actually coming up with stuff that was not already in existence as incredibly inappropriate to be sexy. Sexy corn, anybody? Anybody out there for sexy corn? I look forward to people dressing up as sexy corn for Halloween. I hope that happens. I hope we've made that a thing. Yeah. What's your favorite lyric in the show that like you wrote it and you were like, Darn, that's good. No, I don't have a favorite. I love them all. But the first one that I wrote that made 
Tina and Jeff laugh will always, the beginning of Stupid With Love uh, has a special place in my heart because I was like, yes, I have a shot at this job. Amazing. Stupid With Love, also one of my favorites because you use the word nonplussed and you rhyme it with calculust. Thank you very much. On that note, go to Spotify and listen to it or buy the cast album. Best of luck tonight. Thank you so Congratulations. Much. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. And a pleasure to be here with you. Nell Benjamin, you guys, for Mean Girls, one of their 12 nominations. Lauren Ridloff is next to us. She is nominated the single nomination for Children of a Lesser God on Broadway. The revival of Mark Madoff's play from the 1970s. Tina Landau is here. Ethan Slater is here. I know you guys have all been asking for SpongeBob. Yes, I hear people calling out Calculust. Calculust is real. For those of you who love Mean Girls the movie, you know that Katie meets Aaron Samuels in calculus class. And she sings this song called Stupid with Love on uh, in the show when she meets Aaron in math class. And she's so excited because she's always been stupid with love, but she's good at math. And she is filled with calculust. So go listen to it now. I listened to that album this morning as I was getting ready. I listened to some Sarah Bareilles while I was getting ready, having my hair done by the lovely Justin Bowen. He played some Sarah Bareilles to get me in the mood for our host. Haley Kilgore. I haven't seen her yet. I'm looking out for her. Um, Isaac Powell. I'm not sure if he'll be walking the carpet, but he will definitely be performing on the broadcast as part of the ensemble of the Tony-nominated Best Revival, Once on This Island. We spoke to Michael Arden earlier. We spoke to scenic designer Dane Laffrey. It's just, it's a community affair here, you guys. Who do I see? Who do I see? Again, Tina Landau in a fabulous pink sequin jacket. I am all about it. All right, Lauren Ridloff is coming on camera. Hello. How are you? And we've got Hi, Candace. How are you? Are you overwhelmed? No. Good. <laughs> good for you. Good for keeping cool. I'm happy. You know, I feel so lucky to be a part of this journey from start to the finish. And I'm having fun. There are amazing stars, amazing creative people here. I am just so happy. What is it like to be the representative of your show as that single Tony nominee bringing children of a lesser god here? I feel the weight. I know that I would not be here if it wasn't for my whole Children of Lester God family. My director, Kenny Leon, my co-star, Joshua Jackson, the Magnificent Seven that was part of our cast, and they know that already, that I would not be here if it wasn't for all of them. Well, congratulations on being nominated for your Broadway debut. What you have done on that stage is stunning. We're cheering for you. Thank you, thank you so much. Absolutely. Congratulations. All right, Lauren Ridloff. If you want to learn more about her story and how she went from a stay-at-home mom to Broadway star, go to Playbill.com and read that. Right now we have Tina Landau coming on camera. And Joan Allen? Yes, Joan Allen. Yes, like, like Joe. I was going to say, like I heard Joe Allen at first, like the restaurant, and I was like, no, Joan Allen. Welcome. Come on in. Congratulations on winning the Drama Desk for Best Director of a Musical and now being nominated here tonight. We are so excited for you. We've spoken a lot about your show, but one thing you said during our director's roundtable is that you felt your job was to say vice or not vice. This is our world. This is not our world. So what, what, what were the rules of vice, not vice for SpongeBob? Well, that's the whole thing about vice and not vice. You don't know. You can't, de- no, you can't define it. Like the whole idea is that you can't say why something, you can't explain it, which is why you have to say vice or not vice. So, is there something that comes to mind that was vice and we see in the show and that was not vice that we got rid of before it came? Um, something that's vice is Curtis Holbrook wearing a tutu in the opening. That is vice. Something that's not vice that we got rid of was maybe a more specific topical reference to a president who shall go unnamed. That's not vice. It's, it's relevant to the world, but not SpongeBob, not Bikini Bottom. Exactly. 
Exactly. Terrific. And we, where would we be without our support systems? Exactly. So thank you for and, all that you do. And, and she's going to be doing a show in the fall on Broadway. What are you working on? I, I start rehearsal in August for a Kenny Laundrigan play called The Waverly Gallery. The Wa so there has been hush hush on the Waverly Gallery, but I know Michael Sarah's doing that as well. Lucas We're Hedges, very Elaine May. Oh my gosh. Great cast. Lucas Hedges from Manchester by the Sea or from Off Broadway if you guys saw him. Well we can't wait to see that. What a power duo. Right on. And be sure to read about her not only in the director's roundtable, but in the powerhouse women piece that we did. Because you have done amazing articles. My favorite. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Best of luck tonight. Thank you. Tina Landau, you guys. Tina yeah. Rooting for her. I see opera star Renee Fleming nominated tonight here for Carousel. She made her Broadway debut a few years ago in Living on Love. The opera world was having a coup that she was coming to Broadway. She has been singing Rodgers and Hammerstein for so long. She's been singing You'll Never Walk Alone specifically, which is her character's, one of her character's songs in the show. She also sings June is Bustin' Out All Over. She also sings uh, Clam Bake, which is one of Felicia Fitzpatrick's favorites. So we're lucky to have here on, her here on the carpet in a gorgeous fuchsia number. Andrew Garfield is approaching. Snag him. I will do my best. All right. Who do I see? I will keep my eyes out for Andrew Garfield, you guys. If for some reason we don't get him, we have a long, approximately like 10 minute interview with him from the opening night of Angels in America. If you scroll through the Facebook opening night live stream channel under Playbill's Facebook videos, you can listen to him talk all about playing Friar Walter. You can go to playbill.com and see his feature or his video from 25 Days of Tony's. I will do my best to grab him. But, you know, everything is quick. Everything is quick. I'm going to see. Maybe we can grab Mr. Paul Thornley from Harry Potter. We're going to see if we can grab Paul. I'm not sure if he's doing press, but he plays Ron Weasley in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. We'll see if he's willing to talk. Oh, he is. Here he comes. You want to know what? That's not a bad bag to be holding. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful it? thing. Suits Great me. to see you Hello, again. Nice to see you. Congratulations on so much love for Harry Potter. What has it been like to receive the love of the American public after having so much success across in Britain? Well, you look a bit more effusive, so you really feel the love here, which is a, a lovely thing. Yeah. What about working opposite both Jamie and Noma, nominated here tonight, your relationships on stage with them? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a lovely thing for the whole show to be recognized in this way. And people who I've, I've spent a lot of time with over the last few years, in my, I, I love them deeply. And also, and don't let that well. fool you. This man is giving, bringing his A game to that stage. You bring the humor that we need from Ron Weasley. That's very sweet of you. Absolutely. Tell me, John Tiffany, your director, is nominated tonight. What's something that he helped you find and unlock on stage? He's really brilliant at allowing people to be brave and to see what happens. Find your inner Gryffindor. Exactly. Terrific. Well, thank you thank so you much. much. We'll let you return Sonia Friedman's purse yeah. to her. <laughs> Congratulations. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Gray Henson is here from Mean Girls, one of my favorite favorite characters in Mean Girls. He made his Broadway debut as Elder McKinley in the Book of Mormon, which was also directed by Casey Nicola. So look who they tapped when they needed someone to play Damien Hubbard, the man whose tagline is too gay to function from the burn book of the movie. But you have to come see him in Mean Girls on Broadway. His performance is so nuanced and so wonderful. He and Barrett Wilbert Weed, who plays Janice, are actually the show's narrators. So they bring the opening number of a cautionary tale to us. He has two amazing show stoppy musical theater numbers as the musical theater loving high school kid that Damien is. One is called Where Do You Belong? It's the musicalization of that cafeteria scene that we all love in the movie. And then another one that I listened to three times this morning called Stop, which is all about 
your impulse control as a teenager and maybe how you shouldn't text someone six times when they're ignoring you. It's one of my favorites. He's nominated for Best Featured Actor in a Musical Tonight for Mean Girls, one of their 12 nominations. Of course, they're nominated for Best Musical, Best Book of a Musical, Tina Fey, Best Choreography, and Best Direction for Casey Nicola, his ninth and 10th nominations. So it's really thrilling to have him here tonight. Gray Henson is just one person away. Ethan Slater, you guys, the SpongeBob SquarePants, is just down the carpet. Barrett, I don't think, is here on the carpet. Sadly, there just aren't enough slots for everyone to be nominated. But she was on stage at the Drama Desk Awards with Gray. They sang the music to Cautionary Tale with rewritten lyrics for the rules for Drama Desk winners. How long your speech was allowed to be, how you hold the trophy, where you go once you win to get your picture taken. It was hilarious. They're comedic geniuses. We also have this really special feature on the two of them coming out in the June print playbills. So if you've seen a show in June, not only do you have that beautifully redesigned print playbill pride cover, yay the rainbow, you also will have a feature on Janice and Damien, a.k.a. Barrett and Gray. Gray and Ethan, Rebecca York is excited. I'm so glad that you're excited. I'm excited. Gray is a sweetheart. If you haven't bought your tickets to see him in Mean Girls, you absolutely should. Come see him sing both of those songs and come see his phenomenal tap dance break. It's everything. I love classic tap in a musical. Who out there grew up as a tap dancer? Give me some hearts. Tell me if you grew up with that. All right, who else do we have? Mr. Andrew Garfield is here. I'm going to do my best to grab him. Hold the phone. After Gray, I'm going to try and get Andrew for you. Forgive my back, but if you want Andrew, this is what's going to have to happen. I'm trying to get Andrew for you. Enjoy the back of my dress for a moment. You got it. Okay. You got it. Do you mind? Can I ask you to just tap one of them on the shoulder for me? Yeah. Thank you. Here. Can, can we grab him? Great. We are going to get Andrew. See, it was worth turning my back. Thank you so much. <gasps> Hello. How are you? I'm fantastic. Are you Great Henson. I'm, I'm, I was watching myself before. Right. I, this is for all the comments are live. The video is not. So you're here. You're oh, live. Yeah. Amazing. I'm live. Here we are. I am so excited. I was just telling everyone, I listened to Stop three times this morning. In preparation. In preparation. Same. Tell me. No. Could you imagine? I, don't, I will never listen to it. It's so weird. But do you love singing it? Oh my god, it's my favorite. It's just like when you sing like "The Lovely" is basic. I just come it's, on. It's that's for all of us. That is for our theater folk. You know what I mean? Like it's truly like what a gay best friends anthem. Absolutely. That's what it is in my book. Yeah. Tell me about tapping Casey Nicola's choreography because we so rarely get to see like really true show tappy choreo. Yeah. No, it's amazing. I never considered myself a tapper by any means. No way. Yeah, I grew up dancing when I was three, but tap was never something that I was like, I need to tap. But it is so much fun to do. And everyone's like, you're such a good tap. And I'm like, I'm good at faking it. I can do the movements and I can give you some face acting. And if you distract them up here and you get the right thing down, I mean, it's a dream. It also comes out of nowhere. So that's what's so exciting right. about it. It's like, right. and we're dancing, yep. but people love it. Last question. Are you wearing the Queer Eye Tony Award socks? Oh, I'm not. <laughs> Oh, I wish I were. He was the subject of Queer Eye parody, Queer Eye Tony Awards version. Not Go noticed. watch it on Playbill or on YouTube. They did such a good job with it, I thought. I was like, this looks profesh. Yeah, Amazing. go watch it. All right. Go continue right. on. Break a leg tonight. We're cheering for you. Nominated for Best Featured Actor in a Musical as Damien in Mean Girls. Andrew Garfield is on the carpet. He's making his way back here. Ethan Slater is next to me. It's a lot, but Wouldn't it's that be a strange joint interview? But it might happen, you guys. We're going to have to see how timing works out. Danny Cardenas loves Gray. He does. He looks amazing in that purple velvet tux blazer. We can't wait to see him perform tonight on the Tonys. 
Gray also did this really fun piece for us about his five comedic inspirations for Damien, one of whom is Lisa Kudrow, another is RuPaul. Go to Playbill.com to find out who the other three are. One of them is a singer who will surprise you, who will surprise you. Felicia is back. I hope you've been watching all of her coverage on Instagram. She is killing it. We've got Ethan Slater coming on the camera in just a moment. Yeah, and um, Ethan's fiance is wearing this fabulous yellow pineapple number behind me. See if you can spot it. It is very palm frondy and tropical and bikini bottom. I'm living for it. Ethan, of course, won the Drama Desk for Best Actor in a Musical last Sunday. We'll see if luck can strike twice tonight. He's here for his Broadway debut after developing the role for six years. Oh, you guys, we may have lost out on Andrew Garfield. He's pres he has to get in there for the Creative Arts Awards. I'm so sorry, but as I said, we have plenty of live interviews with him if you want to hear him talk about playing Prior Walter in Angels in America. Go to that opening night live stream. He took a lot of time with us, which was really generous of him. I'm so sorry that we weren't able to get him tonight. But Ethan is here. Ethan is here. I will. I feel confident promising you, Ethan. So that will happen. Ariel Stato from the band's visit just arrived. We haven't seen a ton from the band's visit, even though they're nominated for 11 Tony Awards, including Best Musical. We heard from David Yazbek earlier. Just to give you some perspective, we're here outside Radio City Music Hall on this little bit of a rainy Sunday, but it is sunny in here. All of these nominees are so excited. SpongeBob and Mean Girls leading the pack with 12 each. It took 849 voters, 43 nominators, to come up with the nominees for 26 categories. There are 130 nominees. There are 59 first-timers, and of those 59, 34 of them are making their Broadway debuts. Also, you couldn't see him, but I just saw him. The boss, Mr. Bruce Springsteen, just walked by. He won a, was the recipient of a special Tony Award this year for Springsteen on Broadway, and now I have Mr. Ethan Slater. Hello, how are you doing? So great. You've made it. You are here. How did you manage to stay healthy doing eight shows a week and all of the nominee craziness for people who have, who don't know what this is like? Oh my goodness. Uh, I slept as much as I could. I took all of my vitamins. Vitamins are important. Uh, I ate a lot. SpongeBob takes his vitamins. Absolutely. Meditate. A lot of Krabby Patties. No, I, I just, I don't know. I tried to like preserve as much as I could. It was it, it's a lot. It's yeah. a little hard. Yeah, we're excited to see you perform at the cast tonight. A little some re, some rewritten fun stuff. You've been with the show since the very beginning. Yeah. What has changed from six years ago to now with who your SpongeBob is, and what has stayed exactly the same from the moment you slipped into that sponge? Oh my goodness! I think everything has changed in a little way. I mean. It started as this really overly hyper thing, and over so the like, years... The I'm ready, I'm ready yeah. version. Yes, exactly. And over the years, it's like settled into a, an emotional journey. SpongeBob goes on a, on a real emotional journey in this show, and there's highs and there's lows. Um, there's a bunch of whole, whole bunch of weird things that happens to SpongeBob, and, and it really affects him in a, in a really human way. And so I think my SpongeBob has somehow become more human over the past six years. He has more human than, he is not a simple sponge. No. All right, well, congratulations. Most complex, most complex sponge there is. Thank you. Oh, enjoy, you look awesome. Your fiance, I love her pineapple dress. Amazing. Ethan Slater, you guys. All right, Ariel Satchel is here. Yes, please, we will take him. Looks like he brought his mom as his date. I love that. Hi, mom. I love when people bring their moms. Also, <laughs> Who is this? Bawa Asagba. Yes, vitamins. Yes, if I have learned anything from performers, it is to take care of yourself. Drink water, get sleep, take your vitamins, use your food as fuel. It's important, you guys. Don Allen wants to marry Ethan. It's a good thing your wife won't mind because he has a fiance. She might mind. Now I get to be in this room and send it out. Sophie Yuri. You're cracking me up, but thank you so much for tuning in. 
Who do you want to win? Tell me who your favorites are. If you haven't seen SpongeBob, you don't know about the emotional journey, but it's very true. Ethan plays SpongeBob SquarePants in the musical version of SpongeBob SquarePants. He's been with it since the developmental readings. Director Tina Landau also co-conceived the show with book writer Kyle Jarrow, who is nominated tonight for his debut. One of the coolest things that she told me was that hers was an editing process, that Nickelodeon allowed her to invite a whole bunch of designers, a whole bunch of writers, a whole bunch of creators into the room to all pitch their ideas and know that like they might not get the job, but we might ask you for this idea. And then they kind of edited down and honed the version. David Zinn ended up designing the costumes and the set. Um, Peter Negrini did projections, Walter Trarback and Mike Dobson did the sound. We have amazing choreography from Christopher Gatelli, and all of that came out of this honing and editing process. I urge you to read and watch the Director's Roundtable. Playbill.com slash Director's Roundtable really is powerful. All right. Ariel Sagel is right next to me. He is nominated for playing Khalid, the Egyptian trumpet player in the band's visit, nominated for his Broadway debut. Who is that? I can't see. I can't see who it is. I can't see who we were clamoring for. Taylor Louderman and Ashley. Ashley Park already went by. I'm so sorry it was chaotic, you guys. But I haven't seen Taylor. There's a possibility that she is still coming. Let's see. I see Kelly O'Hara. That's who I see in a beautiful feathered gown. I see Kelly. I see Denise Guff nominated tonight for playing Harper Pitt in Angels in America. I see Michael Potts, part of the company of the Iceman Cometh, nominated for Best Revival of a Play tonight. Nathan Lane. Karen King is, is rooting for we Nathan Lane. Lit? We're getting lit. Facebook Come Live. On in. Come on oh, in. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. And I have white. Well, you can't see. My shoes are very proud Oh, she's wearing some white Converse, you guys. Just to, like, converse. switch it up a little. Oh. Congratulations. Make sure. I don't, I don't care about them seeing me. I care about them seeing oh, you. Oh, can so they see close. me right now? They can see you. You can't see yourself on the monitor, okay. but they can totally see All good. you. Hey, guys. The this journey is, this to is Broadway, the, the yeah, journey to Khaled. This is the face of somebody who I like, can't really believe he's here, but is very happy to be with his like, family member, Ruthie. Um, he's looking around. He sees uh, Titans. He sees Chris Jackson to his left. I know, how crazy. And 96,000 at the Tony Awards, which like changed my life. I was going to say, like, what is your favorite Tony Awards memory? 96,000. Uh, I remember seeing that. In the and Heights. My mom can tell you. I think she was around when I saw it. I just couldn't stop watching it. And, and and then, well, you may or may not know this, but six months later, I met him at the stage door, and he, and he took me on the stage, having not known me as a 17-year-old kid, and said, I know you'll work. I know you're going to make it. Just learn how to tell a story. And so now I'm standing next to him. And, like, I, have I learned how to tell a story? I don't know. But I mean, I mean, you're nominated for a Tony. That's a pretty solid endorsement that you've learned to tell a story. I suppose. But through this whole experience, you've really used your platform to talk a lot about representation, not just you know, casting actors in non-specific roles, but also casting ethnically correct roles, well, authentic yeah, roles. Authentically. Well, it's, it's really important, and, and uh, my mom can tell you. Uh, I'm mixed. My father, who's going to be at the Tonys, is, is of Yemeni, Israeli descent, and I just remember as a kid feeling like very ashamed of my heritage and feeling very embarrassed by it and partially because there wasn't a lot of our representation in the media and so now I get to meet Middle Eastern kids even even as recently as yesterday a young Palestinian wow. girl saying oh my goodness I, I just want to hug you there's this new space for me that I never knew existed um, and so this is I mean it's transforming my life and my own sort of sense of pride and my identity but it's also helping other people and yeah. um, it's so powerful so it's like a double whammy. It's like it's having a social yeah. impact. I can't believe it. Amazing. All right, before I let you go, teach the fine folks at home a good Hebrew phrase. Like, what's something you do? What's like, I mean, Mazel Tov is congratulations, right? No, but like, uh, a, like, a good what? Hebrew phrase would be if you're annoyed by someone, say, Lech ki binimat. Get out of my face. <laughs> what about <laughs> something nice, though? What about good luck? Ah, uh, batlecha. And, and, well, well, since we're here and we're live, there's a joke. I actually didn't know how to conjugate it correctly with Sharon Saig in the cast. So one side I said, Be'atzlech. 
and that's Which like is wrong. like the male version it would, it would, the female no, version. It, but it's not like a gender associated word. So my Hebrew squad, uh, shout out to Sharon. But uh, <laughs> I love that learning from castmates. <laughs> Bat All right. Well, that's what we wish for you. You look great. Congratulations. We'll see, we'll see you see later. You Congratulations. Great to see you. Thank you for instilling a love of musical theater in this one. That's what we need our moms for. All right, people are loving Kate Rockwell and Erica Henningsen, both part of Mean Girls, which is nominated for Best Musical here tonight. Who am I looking around? I see Kelly O'Hara, the queen. I see Denise Guff. I see Katrina Lank. It feels like we should be rounding out on this, but goodness gracious, the stars just keep on coming. If you have questions for any of them, if you have questions for Kelly, who is about to star in the London mounting of The King and I, Reuniting with Ken Watanabe, her Tony Award winning performance. We're going to ask her about that. Katrina Lank, nominated tonight for the band's visit, lead actress in a musical. You may have seen her in Indecent last year. You may also have seen her a while back in Once. She played Reza at one point, the violinist, fierce violinist. Denise Guff is nominated tonight for Angels in America, her Broadway debut. She originated the role at the National theater in London before the production moved here for the 20th and 25th anniversary production of Tony Kushner's two-part masterwork. Tony Kushner, he, that's another reason to watch the Angels in America live stream. Watch it back, listen to what that man has to say about writing an eight-hour epic that doesn't feel like eight hours at all. It goes by so fast. You have until July 15th to come see it on Broadway. You will not be sorry. I. It will change your life. It will change your life. It changed mine. Victoria Margaret, what are the people she says she sees? Oh, that I see Katrina, who's nominated for lead actress in a musical for the band's visit, and Denise Guff. I don't know if you can see Kelly O'Hara over my shoulder, but I'm going to grab her for you. Zach Quinto is walking by to present this evening. He's starring right now in The Boys in the Band which will be eligible at next year's Tony Awards since it opened on May 31st, which is long after the cutoff. It's actually after the nominations. The nominations came out May 1st. So we that's a limited run, 15 weeks only at the Booth Theater before they get ready for their next inhabitants. And then we'll find out next Tony's what happens. The Broadway season never rests. It is year-round now, friends. There was a time when they broke for summer stock in regional theater. Not anymore. It is all year-round. Which reminds me, we have our first opening coming up. Um, Head Over Heels, the Go-Go's musical, directed by Michael Mayer, who brought you Spring Awakening. Choreographed by Spencer Liff, who choreographed Falsettos, which is about to go out on a national tour. Everybody is connected. Everybody's worked with everyone. I have not seen Lauren Ambrose yet, but I'm, Molly. We're going to do one question with Denise Guff. One question. Hi, Hi Ruthie. How are you? I'm oh, my fantastic. sister is watching this. Yes. She's like staying up all night to watch this. Say hi. I'm sister. doing playbill for my sister. Amazing. You're just going to leave that on the show. Leave it there. It has been a whirlwind. Welcome to Broadway. Oh my God, you guys do not do things by halves. No. This is intense. What has That's been amazing. the biggest difference between Britain and that run and coming here? And like, what has settled more for you guys? Well, it's changed a lot for me. I, I feel like just because New Yorkers know this play, so it feels like a great American play. So it makes more sense here somehow. Um, yeah, it's in it's in its home. Yeah. So it's kind of better. I am way better in it. Yeah, you feel that way? Yeah, totally. I'm way better. We've been doing it for so long. Finally, I'm starting to understand the part. So who so who is your Harper Pitt? Who did you find in her? Oh, she's a hero. And also she's like very of this times up movement, you know. Yes. She's kind of a woman that has to choose herself and get out from under the patriarchy without, like, getting too political. But you know what I mean. She. We wouldn't want to be too political with Angels in America. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, in my career. It's yeah. not like I do, you know, do frothy comedies. Yeah. Well, best of luck tonight. Thank we'll be rooting much. for you. And hi to your sister. Hi What's her sister? name? Zita. Zita. Hello, Zita Guff. Thank you. Enjoy. Hi again. All right.
I grabbed her. I got her. Laura Osnes was here. You'll have to rewind in the live stream. She was a vision in pink. We talked to her about uh, Bandstand coming to the big screen. We talked about Crazy for You in development and hoping to come to Broadway next year. I see Haley Kilgore. I'm going to do my best to grab her. I'm trying to grab... Get ready. Matt Bomer is going to do a drive-by. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Saw it. When they tell me no press, there's nothing I can do, but I can point them out for you. Yes. Miss Kelly O'Hara. Hi. Congratulations. Thank it's so, so wonderful much. to see you. You too. Thank you. We're so happy to have you here. Even if you weren't in this season, no, we not. you were in Brigadoon this year. Yes, that's right. Which, nice. which we spoke about with, uh, with Patrick and finding the love story there. Yeah. You're about to go back and do another different kind of love story. Tell me about gearing up for The King and I in London. Well, you know, it's like putting on a really comfortable uh, hat, but it's also brand new in, a, in its own way. We have a wonderful new cast. Ken and I are revisiting each other in this great way. Um, it'll be new audiences, and, and I've lived, I, I have some more life experience. And um, I was saying before that when we did it the first time, Hillary Clinton was running for president, and it, it had a great message, and now somehow it seems even more important and more relevant than ever to tell this kind of pro-feminine story. Right, so has your perspective on on Anna changed and have you discovered new things about her? Absolutely. Um, Anna's a, an amazing person to me. Um, she's so flawed and so layered and so brave and so strong and I really think she's beautiful and I, I've never really revisited a character before and I think it, of all the ones that I could do, I, I'm so glad it's her. And tell me about a favorite Tony Awards memory for you. Well, obviously, uh, the, the last winning time. and doing the worm. Well, that was pretty awesome. Um, but you know, my first one was probably the most beautiful, uh, Light in the Piazza. I was so proud of that show and so proud of Vicky and all my the collaborations in that show, which then led to all my other shows: Ted Sperling and Bart Shear. Yeah. Lincoln Center and with Bridges and yes. South yeah, Pacific Bridges and King, all of them. Yeah, South Pacific King and I. So I, I think it was, and it was such a stress-free evening. I had no idea. There were no expectations. The fact that I was even there was like a dream come true. Well, congratulations! Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Enjoy the evening. All right, Kelly O'Hara, you guys. Bart Shear, director, nominated for My Fair Lady, is here to my right. Haley Kilgore is here. We're going to grab both of them. I hope you guys saw it. Taylor was rushed in there. There was nothing I could do about grabbing her. But we have plenty of content with her online. Again, the Mean Girls live stream from opening night or her 25 Days of Tony's video. It's excellent. Um, I hope you guys were excited that we got Kelly. That was really exciting for us to have her. I also love her feathers. It's really amazing. All right. I didn't see Allow my back for one more time. Thanks so much and congrats. All right. We have Bartlett Shear coming on live. Hello. Um, how are you? Congratulations. Thank you. So do you. Congratulations. I like the silver tie. It's very Tony appropriate. Uh, okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> we were talking, we've been talking all night about the director's round table, how powerful it was to be in that like room. It? Did they respond to it well? I think so. Oh, good. I think okay, so. Good, good. But one of the things we were talking about is your job saying vice, not vice, establishing rules for your world. That, that was, that was also, Tina that's Landau. Tina. That was right. Like that. Yeah. So, but in establishing a vocabulary for your world, because that, that's something that yeah, every Yeah, I talked about, you know, every show has its own autonomous logic. Right. And you sort of so build. So, what's the logic life. for My Fair Lady that you had that you were trying to build around? Uh, the logic for My Fair Lady that's hardest physically is it's a lot of very big realistic locations and how to get from place to place. Unlike other things which you can kind of abstract and play around with. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of it had to do with the position of Eliza, like where she was throughout and following her. So You're nominated for your eighth Tony tonight. I am. Congratulations. Thank you. Over the years, do you have a favorite Tony memory? Uh, well, absolutely my first with Light in the Piazza. Which, uh, which Kelly just said was her favorite Tony Yeah, memory. I mean, it was such an amazing show, and Adam did it such was. a great piece, and uh, we were doing really well, and we, we, we it was just a big, all the excitement of the first time, plus it was a very special piece of writing. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Best of luck inside. Bart Shear. 
All right. We're going to get Haley Kilgore to come back this way. Don't worry. I know you just watched her go by, but she will come back. I have friends in, in high places with that one. Nominated tonight for Team Moon in Once on This Island. She's making her Broadway debut. They did a an international casting search for this role. And what's very special... Oh, you want to know what? Let's grab Katrina Link while we're waiting for Haley. Hi, Katrina. So great to see you. Come on into the live stream. People have been cheering your name out there. Tell me what it is like. You, you know, you've been part of the Broadway community for so long now. I remember you in Once. We saw you in Decent last year. What is it like for it to culminate in this moment? I know. I always I go with the. Like, I always go with the easy ones. Uh, Thank you for your it's time. bizarre, and I haven't even thought about it like that at all. So that's something I'm gonna have to think about for a while, and maybe I won't even understand until like five years from now. It feels. It's really just thrilling to be here and to be a part of this community and uh, to see so many friends who are also nominated. Be you know. So it's. Yeah. Uh, it just feels like. A, um, I feel like a little kid. Like yeah. just, just really exciting. You are one of the few shows that opened in the fall, so you guys have been solidly in your run for a long time. Are there still new things coming to the surface for you as Dina? Yes, yes, all the time. Thank goodness. And, uh, Can you give me an example? I love a good example. <laughs> well, recently she's really been enjoying her sandwich a lot more than usual. So That means we're running her ragged in the Tony <laughs> campaign. That's what that means. However, a good sandwich. Listen, you told me that that Dina comes to life in you through her physicality, and you gotta fuel that physicality. You gotta fuel that physicality. When something tastes good and it makes you feel good, and then you never know where that's gonna lead you. Yeah. So. <laughs> and talk to me about playing opposite the brilliant Tony Shalhoub, who's also nominated tonight. You know, nominated as a as a couple. He is wonderful, and I'm so thrilled for him that he's nominated for. A, an actor in a musical, which is the first time he's you know done a musical, and he's uh, he's worked so hard and is such a generous, um, generous and thoughtful human being and performer. So I'm I'm really thrilled for him. Fantastic. Well, best of luck tonight, and good luck performing too. We know that you like got to get out of all this and back into all this. It's crazy. I know. All right, Katrina Link, you guys. Who else is here? I see. Those of you who are asking about Lauren Ambrose, I see her. I see Harry Haddon Payton. I see Matthew Morrison down the line, for those of you Glee fans out there. And now that we've been speaking about Light in the Piazza a whole bunch, that feels appropriate. We'll see if we can snag him. I'm seeing who else. Who else? Who else is here? The Creative Arts Awards actually are the things that happen from 7 to 8 before the awards go live on CBS at 8 p.m. Eastern. So a lot of them are rushing in that way. Lauren Ambrose is wearing a stunning blue. She's stopping at one place before she comes to us. Alex Gemignani is also here nominated tonight for playing Enoch Snow in Carousel. Michelle Backer, you've been asking for Melissa Benoit all night, and I have not seen her. I'm not sure if she walked the carpet, but you will see her presenting on the broadcast for sure. Hi, Alex. How are you? Come on in. We are live. Oh, we're doing the live thing we're doing again. The live thing again. How That's like you? our gimmick. You I'm fantastic. Beautiful. Thank you. You look very dapper. Well, you know. Very, very smart. Yes. Blue steel, yeah. Yeah. I think. I don't really. Bald guys don't do blue steel so well. Eh. You pull it off. Thank you pull you. it off. We spoke to Lindsay earlier. Amazing. You're Lindsay. beautiful. What's uh, I say um, something with an M? No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. My, yes. My, that one. That one. Carousel. <laughs> I love how much you guys. This guy is too funny for Enoch Snow. That's all I know. That's, but I loved hearing. I was reminded last week when you guys performed at the Drama Desk, like. We're whipping out that operatic sound, man. Hey, girl. You know, you got to do what it says. So, uh, I mean, it's it's a thrill to get to sing like that, I have to say. It's, it's um, you know, you don't, mater there's wonderful contemporary material, and I've gotten to do some of it, and I love that. But to get to sing like this with 24 pieces, yeah. total gift. That orchestra is beautiful. Oh, it's amazing. What is your favorite Tony Awards memory, whether you were here, whether you were watching at home? My favorite Tony Awards memory was probably the first Tony Awards that I performed on in 2004. I was, um, I was in Assassins. Assassins, 
And uh, we did, it was nine people, we did the finale, all the assassins. I remember that. I remember watching that. And the thing that blew my mind, other than like, we were at 54, so we were 54, but when we restaged it for Radio City, we were so far apart from each other. And then the curtain went up, and I was like, oh my God. I mean, there were just that. tears of people. I was like, I mean, we were used to the cafe tables at Studio 54, so it was, I mean, it was just like that, that surge of adrenaline yeah. was just off the charts. Well, we're going to let you go inside. Have a blast tonight. Thank you. I hope to celebrate with you later. Absolutely. We're going to grab, oh, Lauren is going to talk to Sirius first, and then she's going to talk to us. All right. I've got Lauren Ambrose on deck. She's playing Eliza Doolittle in the revival of Lerner and Lowe's My Fair Lady. We were talking to Bart Shear about it earlier. We spoke to Norbert Leo Butts about this earlier. So Lauren Ambrose, who plays the titular fair lady, as they say, is here on the carpet. It is her Broadway musical debut. She was in Broadway previously in Exit the King and Awake and Sing, but now she's here. Um, so I feel a little bit like... Let me see, let me see. You know what I mean? All right. This says that my name is on it, but I feel like... Oh, you know what? I'm not sure. Hold on. We may have, I may have lost Lauren, but I see LaShawn's down the carpet. And I see, who else do I see? I see David Morse. I see Matthew Morrison. I mean, we're definitely winding down. We are winding down. Jessica Keenan Wynn. I know, she looks amazing. We may have lost Lauren. Alrighty, I'm keeping my eye out. Trying to see who we have. Trying to see who we have. Melissa and Chris, we want them. I'm going to do my best. I really, you guys, don't look for Melissa Benoist. I don't think she's here anymore. There's Lauren. All right. Can we grab Lauren for one question? All right, she's running, you guys. But that was her in that lovely fairy white dress. How ethereal. As I said, she plays Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady. And, uh, and we are so excited. All right. Who else do we have? All right, we're going to grab Jessica Keenan Wynn. Hi. Hi. Congratulations. Thank Welcome you. to the Tonys. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I mean, Just I did it personally. <laughs> yeah, I am I am thrilled to be here. My first Tony night. Never been to the Tonys oh before. God. So this is really, this is like a really special moment. Yeah. Very What's special. your favorite Tony Awards memory from watching then at home? Oh, my gosh. Wait, hold on. There's so many. I feel like I've watched... Okay, only because it's the first thing coming to my mind, but I remember when I saw In the Heights, yeah. I mean, I've been watching Tony's forever, but In the Heights, like, it shifted things for me, where I was like, oh, you can do that? That's a possibility. Um, and clearly, you know, Lin-Manuel has not done well since then, but... I know, um, shame. It's tragic, it's really sad. Shame when people just, you know, fizzle out that yep, way. Yeah, but that was one that I watched over and over again and then flew to New York to see, specifically. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so that was a big, happy Tony memory. If you could be in any of the Tony-nominated shows tonight, which show would you want to be in? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Mean Girls is obvious, but I'm not going to go with that. So I fun. I do a lab of it, so let's just, let's just say that I can check that off. I think My Fair Lady. Mm. I saw it. Lauren Ambrose was, was so say, Another redhead, I shall we? I Leo Butts' character, though. So I'd want to be... I mean, get us all to the church on time, am I right? I mean, Mr. Doolittle, that's the rule. That's yeah. The rule. So uh, that was that. Did you see, have you seen that number? Have you seen I that? have, and we can't wait to see it on the broadcast oh, I can't tonight. Wait to see, I'm so excited. It's, it's epic. It's amazing. All right. Yeah. Go inside and enjoy. Lovely Such a pleasure to talk Thank to you. you. Jessica Keenan, win, you guys. Hi. I'm Bethany. All right. Haley dashed away. I'm so sorry, you guys. I did. That one's on me. I did say that I was going to get her, and they dashed her off. We have LaShawn's is still here. Matthew Morrison is here. Let's get a time check. What's the time? It is 7.15. 7.21. This is what happens. Normally, you guys, I am always wearing a watch, but I went glam tonight, so I didn't wear it, and that's what happens. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to have time for... We'll see if we can grab LaShawn's really quick, but they might not even let her stop for us because, quite literally, the award started 20 minutes ago. But... Okay, I have... 
what I have for you to follow. Go to Playbill.com. You can read inside the press room. You can follow along with the winners. You can hear acceptance speeches. You can continue to follow on social media. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have the roundup of all of the musical numbers. You can see the opening number broken down. So if you're not on Playbill.com, what are you doing? Get to Playbill.com. And I hope that you look at all of our previous coverage. We're going to show you one last look at the prom before we go. A message from Josh Lehman and Beth Level. Take a look. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. It's me, Josh Lehman, and Broadway's darling, Beth Level. And I was just telling her how excited I am to be doing a nymph musical this summer. I'm doing Aaron. The Aaron Brockovich story by Andrew Lippa goes, Hey, Aaron, what you caring about these days? Is it the sky? Is it not? Are we gonna die? Anyway, it needs some work on the rhymes, Andrew. Let's be real. But it's pretty It's pretty good. Anyway, who, who do you think the prom is for? I think the prom is for everybody. I think you can bring your grandparents, and your grandparents can bring their grandchildren. Totally. They, totally, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's a great story, and it, it's... I think everyone will enjoy it. Everyone will needs to be there. Absolutely. It's well, cross-generational. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to go crash a party in a minute. But yes! you have to buy your tickets. You have to go to www.theprommusical.com. I don't know if Playbill can do this, but it's appearing right here above my hand. That was LaShawn's. You just saw her running in. And that is going to be... Our Tony Awards live stream. Hello. We're going to welcome back Felicia. For a hot second. For a hot it's second. Because everyone is running in. They did their sweep of the red carpet. And they're doing the Creative Arts Awards right now. I mean, they're 25 minutes into the Creative Arts Awards. Yeah, follow along on Twitter. We've got all the live tweeting happening. I've got great stuff on Instagram. And don't oh. worry, you'll find out who won the Creative Arts Awards. That's like, you know, when they come back from mer from commercial and they're like, while you were gone, right, right, right. so and so won for costume design. <laughs> so love. you'll find out. Oh, we love you. Love um, um, so it was a thrilling night. We spoke oh, to so many people. Yes. I'm so proud of us. I could not, like all of these Tony nominees say about their cast and their creative teams, I could not do this without you. Oh. My Girl, support, my co-host. Thank you. you all so much for tuning in. Yes. I am Senior Features Editor, Ruthie Fearberg. And I'm Social Media Manager, Felicia Fitzpatrick. Follow Playbill. You can follow me on Instagram at Ruthie Fearsberg. Felicia Nicole 86. And we will see you for the rest of the evening, Ooh. after parties and all. Happy Tony Sunday. See you next time. Bye. Bye.